you know, thanks for what you do with your podcast and all the rest. Uh, you're doing a great job. Hope everybody keeps tuning in. You get a lot of good info, a lot of insights, understandings of how to get strong, how to stay strong, how to use your strength. You do a great job, dude. <laughs> you make things better than they are in real life, I think. If you don't follow Massonomics, y'all do it. Social media, uh, website, everything. Massonomics. Yeah. Welcome, everyone, for episode 418 of the Massonomics Podcast. We are the lifting podcast about nothing, formerly the world's strongest podcast, but we had to ditch that and come up with something more fitting, and that's where the lifting podcast about nothing was born. We're recording out of the Dakotas, as always. It's the south of the, the south, southern of the Dakotas, and my name is Tanner. And my name is Tommy. And we got a lot of good stuff uh, this week, but we're going to have to table all that because we're doing a Q&A instead. <laughs> so instead of good stuff, we're going to hear from you guys. We're going to leave it up to the wild cards here. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we're doing a special q and We're not sure the last time we've done a call-in Q&A has been. Uh, I would say that... Okay, this is a lot of pressure. I would say... It's been a while. I couldn't think it of a better way to put a while. it myself. Thank you, Stained, right on cue. It has been a while since we've done a call-in Q&A, particularly timely for us to do a call-in Q&A because the call-in Q&A is a chance for a lot, of our, a lot of our supporting members to check off another box on their supporting member Hall of Fame card. Get that name, your voice heard on the Massonomics podcast. Which is and, a, uh, that historically a fairly hard achievement to hit. Right, so they could, uh, that is achievement number 11. So if you uh, get your voice on here today, you could mark 11 off of your list. But before we talk about any of that, I want to talk about the Strength Co. Check out the Strength Co. They're Olympic iron plates and barbells, particularly their plates. They're the go-to plates of Massonomics Gym. Uh, Their iron Black, E-coated, easy to grip, uh, fun as hell to use plates. And also, we've got their bumper plates that we've been tossing around a little bit at Massonomics Gym. they got their bumpers in 10s, 25s, and 45s. So if you're the kind of person who does some cleaning and jerking, maybe enjoy a good snatch, you might want to get some uh, affordable bumper plates, and Strength Co.'s got them. Uh, but every type of person that listens likes a good iron plate, I think. And for those, they are the best. Check them all out at thestrength.co. While you're at it, give their podcast a listen. 13 episodes in. If you're into podcasts, that sort of thing, uh, it's called The OK Podcast. Thank you, The Strength Co. And today's episode is also brought to you by Barefoot Shoes. Barefoot Shoes are made by our neighbors to the north in North Dakota. Most shoes harm your mobility by over-restricting your foot's natural movement. But barefoot shoes are designed with minimal restrictions so your feet can move the way they're supposed to. Move with more strength and confidence in every step. If you've been listening to this show, you know that Tanner and I are both big fans of barefoot footwear. And when I'm looking through their site right now, Tanner, they got a couple new colors in here that if you haven't been on there in a while, it might be worth checking out. Like the Mystic Moss colorway. Never seen that one before. Available in both the Ursus suede low top and high top. Looks like the Kabuki Crimson has made a comeback. And I still see a little one in there called the Ursonomics. And last time I checked, if you're oversized like... If you're a size 3, you could get an (laughs) Ursonomics. If you're oversized like 6, you're in trouble. But if you're like sizes 3 through 6, you might have a pair left. So that is another option as well. Springtime has hit us. It means summer is hopefully just around the corner. And some of the Oso Low Top Suede's. Or canvas options would probably be great uh, for this upcoming season here. So if you are interested in a pair of barefoot shoes for yourself, make sure to hop over to barefoot.store. And while you're there, use code Massonomics to save 10% on your next order. That's barefoot.store, code Massonomics, save you 10%. Thank you, Barefoot Shoes. Thanks, Barefoot. Uh, Something about when we made a shoe of our own, I learned about colorway and how you don't, when you're talking about certain things, you don't just say color, mm. you say color way. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. Yeah, I, I actually never really thought about that. Uh, yeah, with shoes, it's typically color way. But like with a car, it's like the paint scheme, you know, it's like how people refer right, to color. Right, 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 right. 
Uh, yeah. What else? Yeah. If you want to be real plain and boring, you just say what color is it. But if you want to sound like you know what you're talking about, when you talk about <laughs> shoes, you say colorway. When you talk about uh, cars, you say yeah, paint scheme, and I've, I've you don't just never, say what color is it. I've never really thought of that. Sound is like interesting. a real industry expert. Uh huh. You got to speak speak the lingo, talk the talk. Yes. And walk the walk. Um, mm-hmm. We got do have a lot of good topics this week, but we'll see. We're going to table some of those right now in lieu of getting on, getting some of these people on the horn, right? Yes. And uh, this is always fun because you never know what you're going to get when we just dial up these people uh, that left us questions and their phone numbers. So uh, it could sometimes be an interesting mixed bag. An interesting mixed, one. that's not my bag, baby. Yeah, that's not. And they keep um, coming in. They just keep showing up. We got a lot of live listeners for the uh, call-in Q&A this week, don't we? Mm-hmm. I don't blame um, them. Okay, so this first one, we're going to try Big Emmett. And you let me know what sound is like. You know, I've got it. I've got. Uh, oh. I've got this plugged in on my board. So let me know if I need to, if it sounds like to you I need to turn it up or not. I've got it uh, at an equal level of our other stuff as of right now. So should we give uh, Big Emmett a try here? See what he's got for us? Yes, let's do it. All right. We are... Oh, just wait, Emmett. We don't have this hooked up right. <laughs> yes, I don't hear anything. <laughs> no, Do you have the phone slider moved up? Yep. That's a, but it's not going through the board at all. I can just hear it through my phone. Um, maybe your little, maybe your little dongles fighting you. Yeah. So maybe give that a little unplug and a plug back. Oh no, you know what the problem is. All right. Do you have the correct? Remember, you oh, need wait. a, a special. Big Emmett. Hello. Oh, there, there. it is. There it is right there. I guess it was just the dongle, maybe. Can you hear us, Emmett? Okay. Big Emmett, are you there? I am here. Oh. Ah, Tommy, can you hear him? I right? can hear him, Emmett. It's great to hear your voice again. Just makes me feel like I'm in good hands. <laughs> How are y'all doing? <laughs> Pretty Very good. good. Long time no see. Oh, yeah. Emmett, how, before you ask us a question, how was your move? We, you, big Emmett was a big helper for us at the Arnold and you, like the day after the Arnold, you were, you were making a little move, weren't you? Yeah, it went well. Um, yeah, I came straight from the Arnold to Kentucky. Um, the next day I started my new job and yeah, it's been going well. And you're, uh, training, doing some training for the army or something like that, aren't you? Yeah. So I'm a strength coach in the H2S program for the U S army. Cool. <laughs> Does anyone ever tell you, huh? <laughs> I've heard it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. Uh, so, Big Emmett, did you have a question for us today at all? Yes. Uh, when will Lift be moving into the Massonomics gym? Oh, say that. There's a crucial part that it cut out again. You better say it again. It cut out on me for just a second. When will a monolift be oh, moving into the Massonomics gym? A monolift. That, that yeah, a big question. Emmett uh, in the crew wolf pack, a multi-ply lifter guy. So, of course, the monolift question coming up. And uh, I guess that would be my question to field. Now, Big Emmett, you went into the gym last when you were here for the Lift Hard Live Easy Classic, I'm sure, right? You were there? Yeah. So you know yep. the layout. Um the tricky part is the amount of space a monolift takes up. <laughs> and, <Yes. laughs> but that being said, if to be, to be fair, it could be made to fit. If I, you know, if I made it a priority, it could, uh, it could go in there, but no plans as of yet, but I would just say, never say never. Maybe Massonomics gym, maybe the layout changes someday and there's all of a sudden room for one. So I would say never say never, but no immediate plans for the monolift as of yet. I, I got, I got, I like I this question a lot. A great centerpiece. Yes, it would be great. I like this question a lot, and I have follow-up questions now because I've never in my life shopped a monolift. Tanner, like, what, what are the brands that make monolift? I know Elite FTS, you can get a monolift. Elite them. FTS is the one I've looked at before. I don't know what, if what they run? some other ones, but I think there's, like, Dyna something. Dyna Body. Yeah, Dyna Body. Um, I think they're, like, at least five grand, aren't they? Uh, Dyna Body start in the low 3K area. Okay, okay, mm, okay. So let's say though, like, let's say tomorrow, 
on marketplace one pops up like we'll, we'll do a little scenario here let's say one pops yeah. up in minneapolis for two grand and it's black and red and looks sweet would, what would you think of that i just like not there the is space? no there is no room for it okay i don't know if like you saw right a hot now. deal on something if, you, if here's what i'll say if one popped up in aberdeen <laughs> For a thousand dollars, I would go buy it. Yeah, and I would just figure out later what to do with okay. it. You know, it might okay. not be like if it really like if it was just. I mean, obviously that's a fictitious scenario, mm-hmm. but just if that did happen, if one popped in up in Aberdeen tomorrow for a thousand dollars, I would buy it. But that's because I would also know that I could always sell this thing if I needed mm-hmm. to. You really also. had to. Yeah. So I don't think there'll be one yet by the time you're here uh, this summer again, Emmett. Gotcha. But never say never. A guy can dream. Yeah. <laughs> Keep holding uh, out hope. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Emmett, we appreciate the question. And uh, lucky for you, you will now get to mark off number 11 on your Hall of Fame card. Thanks for having me, fellas. All right. Awesome. See, see Thanks, you, big Emmett. Emmett. Good luck in Kentucky. Hey, see you, seen Stur- you, you seen Sturgill Simpson there yet? I have not, unfortunately. All I would right, love t- to. Tell him <laughs> hi if you run into him. <laughs> I will. <laughs> All right. See ya. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> Tell him your friend Tanner says hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got, you think we got the kinks worked out of that first one? I there? think so. What were you going to say that was the problem? Because now I want to be. Oh, weary, because or, actually um, it requires a special, the cable to the phone requires a special line in cable, not just any old aux gotcha. cable, but. I yep. would have given you that one when we did this, I believe. Right. Yeah, because you took it. Right. Or no, maybe I have that case. I don't know. I think I've got something that's been plugged into it forever. So, okay. yeah, I think I have it. All right, I think yeah, it's, if it's been plugged into it forever, I think it was just a yes. loose con- connection, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, okay, next we are going to give uh, our friend Big Kevin a call here. So we'll see if this works right off the bat. We'll see if uh, Big Kevin is down for a chat. All the way to Ohio. And was the sound level appropriate on mm-hmm. your end? I can hear good. Okay. Do we got anything? Your call has been forwarded to voice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the old forward well, to voicemail trick. The, the rule is uh, we'll always give them a second shot if it uh, doesn't... So we're gonna try. To, we're gonna move one down the list now. We're gonna to go to Big Jen from Iowa. See if she's got a question for us. Keith thinks thinks she's asleep, but we'll just see about that. Mm-hmm. I mean, she is in the Central Time Zone, so it's not like we're... that's true. Hello, Big Jen. Is that you? It is. Ah, you are live on the Massonomics podcast with Tanner Hello. and Tom. What's up, Jen? <laughs> <laughs> Not much. How are you guys? Oh, Don't just let any old fools call you now. Won't Don't they? let any old sorry <laughs> sons of bitches on here these days. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Uh, so uh, what's the weather like down there in Iowa? Um, it snowed a little bit today, but right now it's it's dry and just cool. Yeah, saw, you guys keep that uh, down there. Yeah. Who ordered that? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, lucky for you, uh, no matter what happens from here, no matter what, you get to mark off number 11 on your Hall of Fame. Yes. Card. That's uh, the whole plan, man. It's yeah. coming together. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be the first one to that. <laughs> well, I don't even remember what it's called. <laughs> uh, master Completer. The, yeah, the master, master Completer. Yeah. Okay. So, do you have a question for Tommy and I tonight? Sure. And by the way, I had major writer's block because I really wanted to get on the Hall of Fame. You've got some so, stiff competition. Emmett, uh, Big Emmett already came out firing for the first one. So uh, you're crap. second. Okay. All right. Well, this is, this, will, this is all I could come up with today. So I did a would you rather. Mm-hmm. Would you rather babysit a coat every day for the rest of your life? Well, I don't like that off the start. I know that. <laughs> or... Would you rather not be able to ever say another Midwest dad phrase ever <laughs> again? Like uh, put her in the old vice or yeah. anything like that. Mm. 
I don't what like uh, would I not physically be able to because I don't know if I could stop myself. <laughs> you know, like, you, would just, it would, it'd be like the Office episode right. where Michael couldn't say it, or it's yeah. like liar liar when Jim Carrey can't <laughs> tell a lie when you try to say it. You're like, <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm. No, but I heard it's really bad for you if you hold it in too long. You know, that sort of thing. Um, I, oh, I think I'd lean towards uh, the code in that one, possibly. I don't know if I could babysit a coat 365. What a burden. I mean, at a certain point, <laughs> though, does the coat get stolen, and then it's, like, not my problem anymore, you know? You just, like, a new coat appears <laughs> yeah, that you just, just always yeah, have. Yeah, exactly, have. like, out of thin air. Like, just, you never go anywhere and not have to have, like, a coat in your hands. Mm-hmm. Like, where, you know how you, like, put your arm at, you, <laughs> at your side and you fold a coat? No, uh, I would just permanently arm. have it tied around my waist. I'd just be that guy going forward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a look, yeah. though, too. <laughs> it is very like, much a look. Dude, and also, like, you'd be like, dude, it's 100 and we're at the pool. Why do you dude, have a coat? That actually used to be, <laughs> actually, that used to be the move at the zoo, you know, when it'd be, like, negative yeah, 20 out. Around. And you couldn't yeah. not wear a sweatshirt because it's negative 20 out. You definitely didn't have a coat, but you'd wear a sweatshirt to the zoo. And then you'd be on the top shelf dancing all night, and it'd get too hot. So what's the move? You tied the sweatshirt around the waist. It's... It's just so, functional. So does it go around the waist or does it go around the neck? Like no, the it went around the waist oh, for dude. sure. <laughs> I, the neck would be a lot of back heat. That generate a lot of back heat. That, that would work. But what if you're like on vacation in Mexico and everyone's like, "Why do you have that coat?" <laughs> be like, it's a, it's an anxiety thing. It's a yeah. comfort thing. <laughs> it's like uh, a blankie. I don't know. That is really hard. That's what she said. Um, <laughs> See, you couldn't do that stuff anymore, yeah. Tanner. You're done. The podcast would have to I shut would down. I would really like have a no line of where the Midwestern phrase mm-hmm. thing is. But also, that is like half of my speak. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if I could do that either. So, Tommy, what you decided you'd I'd, babysit, I'd babysit the, coat. the coat. Yeah, to be able to talk I don't the know. way I want to talk. Uh, I mean, I'm in my ba- house. I have a home gym and I work from home. I'm at my house 98% of my life. To have a coat with me is no big deal. <laughs> I think I've just uh, I've made took I've taken too hard of a stand on the no coat babysitting <laughs> that I can't I just I just can't go back now so I would uh, I would not babysit the coat. Interesting. Wow. Okay, yeah. so uh, well, I'd, it'd be fun to hear like the new phrases that you come up with then. Yeah, yeah. I guess they would just have to be original. I I don't know what I would I don't know like when we went to the Arnold what I would say to people even uh, I would just for think, real for real Hi. oh god stuff like that you're like oh, just like hey this is totally mid guys yeah <laughs> they like, love oh, it god. Tanner's super oh, trendy good. over here yeah. <laughs> that's me uh, on that topic uh, though Jen it, you did bring up something good though and that is surprises me the number of people that have never heard the saying put one in the old vice isn't it weird. I I thought I, everyone knew that saying, and Dr. Mike had never heard it. Multiple people in the Discord have said they've never heard it. I thought everyone knew that <laughs> saying, which honestly shocks me. Okay, so your, your guys' podcast is bringing up multiple things at work about how I had no idea <laughs> that people didn't know things. So yeah. when when J- Big Jeff said he didn't know street dance, it floored that one, me. That one floored me. Yes, yes, that one was a shocking. And I think there is still some misinformation i don't think block parties are street dances no i don't think so either like when someone in the discord says yeah it's kind of like when we all get our grills out and we everyone comes outside and like we uh you know i'm like that's not a street dance a street dance is like an organized shutdown of the main street of the town because there's a band there. Mm-hmm. It's like, like a concert. Yes. Yeah, it's basically on like a, a road. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a concert on the and road. And it's typically the, the concert main is road, actually usually. booked and handled by someone in the city, like in some way. Right. Yeah. yeah it's not just it's like a, a municipality. Bar. Yeah, it's uh, not like a right. bar throwing the party. It's the city is hosting the party. Right. Yes. So yeah, I just I, wanted to I clear that up it. because there seem to be people running with the wrong idea of a street dance. And I just don't want street dance getting a wrong, the wrong name. <laughs> we have to I don't want people minimizing the street dance and say, oh, that's a block party. No, a street <laughs> dance isn't a block party. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're pretty special. We, we have to be continue to be the educators of our Midwest ways yes, to it's everyone. Called, <laughs> it's called culture, sweetie. Look it up. <laughs> it only took us till episode exactly. like 415 to get to what are what is a street dance <laughs> i can't wait to see what else comes in the next episodes yeah uh well great question and uh 
Don't forget to mark off number 11, and we'll see you in July, right? All right. Sounds good. See you can't, there. Can't hold anything back now. Not a bit. All right. See you. Thanks, Jen. Okay. Take you. Bye. See I Luckily, that was a hypothetical question, and I can still say can't hold anything back mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, Big Kevin seems to have just entered the Discord, so maybe that means All he's right. ready. We'll try. We'll try him again. Look, this is the second and final try. It's a lot of pressure on this. Yep. Hey, fellas. Big Kevin, there is that you, is. you old son of a gun? Oh, I'm here this time now. Oh, you're lucky you made it on the second try. You know the rule. You only get two tries, so. Yeah, fool me once, shame on you. <laughs> fool me twice. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I guess they will kind of let anyone in here nowadays, huh? I guess so. <laughs> uh, Big Kevin, we also, you were helping out at the booth quite a bit at uh, the Arnold also. also we had part-time, Big Emmett on all, part-time already. pizza delivery guy, you could say. Yeah. Yeah, I can add that to my resume now. And, um, you know, that was a great time at the booth this year. I, I'm pretty sure you've already got number 11 checked off on your Hall of Fame card. Am I right? This isn't yes. a checkoff yeah. move for I'm you. A yeah. Long time listener, second or third time caller. I bet you're at least like third time. I feel like we've, I feel like we've chatted on the podcast a few times. Yeah. And... Yes. Okay. Um, and also for anyone that doesn't know, it's worth mentioning big Kevin is the one that came out, came up with the, uh, well, you tell everyone what question did you come up with? Oh, the question, the uh, question. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you had to pick one lift to gauge someone's strength, their overall strength, yes. what would it be? Yeah, so you got a lot of uh, Q and A like pressure writing on that, you. So that question yeah. caused ripples into the greater <laughs> lifting universe, even. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, do you have a question for us tonight? Yes, I do. Um, I don't know if Doctor Mike's going to be making a, a video about this <laughs> in a few weeks, but we'll see. Um, but my question for you is: If you would assign a color to each lift, oh. squat, bench, and deadlift what would it be? Um, this kind of comes from, you know, the, uh, the trend that people talk about, like in high school, Oh, like my math notebook is yellow. Like, no math is blue. Mm. You know, people kind of, I feel like math notebook that. is blue. That seems like a like good blue color for it to me too. Re- I would put like reading or, or language arts as yellow probably. Oh, but. see, I would do probably one of those as red reading red. And I think I'd probably okay, do science is green. <laughs> Something in science is green. Exactly. This is what I want, but for the squat bench. And the okay, oh, so we're on the right page. We're uh, just, actually, yep. you're, yep. just, you're bringing back memories that I even did that. I forgot that that was even a thing. <laughs> is but. that Mead? Would you guys have Mead or Five Star? Or is Mead Five Star the same company? Uh, that's a good question. I don't even remember uh, now. I, I think I used whatever was in the Walmart value bin. <laughs> yeah. The uh, but what about college rule, I hope? I hope you weren't a barbarian using wide college rule. College rule, of course. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like what? I'm not. I'm not in second grade. <laughs> right, Give me that college right. rule. <laughs> uh, I think it is. I had to look here, Tanner. It does appear to be Mead Five Star is the brand. It appears. I, I bet there was a big merger acquisition. Yeah, uh, I bet that, that went, went through some intense government sh- scrutiny to get that one to go yeah. through. Yeah, they. I wonder if that's not a dangerous like monopoly territory right. on uh, on uh, those. But what are the, what about this? What about the black and white journal? Uh, notebook. The composition like, notebook. Yeah, notebooks. A composition notebook. Those are kind of like the silent uh, kings just doing their thing, right? I mean, they're like the they never change, do they? Just classics. Why are they called a composition notebook? I don't really know. I don't know I don't if it's, know. it's more like a like that a was book. A, a classic uh, gym notebook for me for many years. That would be like a good training log notebook, actually. Th- that I could see that. That makes sense. Have you ever seen? There's people that. Uh, whether it's journaling or just notes or whatever it is in life, and they just go through tons of these things and they keep them all in like a big, you oh. know, they, like they might, you know, they'll put the date on it and they'll just write in it like crazy. And let's say it takes them three months and then it goes in the bookshelf and they move on to the next one. And then decades go by and they just have bookshelves of all of their thoughts for decades on end. It's kind of a cool thing. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, this, um, maybe I've asked this, You, may, I may have asked this to you before Tommy on the podcast or not, but Question for either of you then, Tommy or Kevin. Did either of you ever learn any formal note-taking uh, mm. throughout school? So, like, there's actually is formal. Like, you start with Roman numerals. That would be your oh uh, your start. And then from there it goes to, I think it's large, uh, capital letters. 
mm -hmm. uh, would be the next sub, and the next sub below that would be lowercase letters, and then the next sub below that would be uh, numerical, and you know that's yeah, and they are I, in, I indented like, accordingly. I feel like this was part of uh, when you were a senior, you had to do a research paper, and I feel like that okay. was part of the the outline yep. process is learning the proper way to create yeah. hierarchies and all of that. But I feel like we learned yep. some of that. I I'm pretty sure I'm sure, right though. that it's Roman numerals, capital letters, lowercase letters, then numbers is the... And lowercase Roman numerals are somewhere in there, too. Is that a thing? If, if you go deep enough, yeah. Okay, wow. <laughs> I, I definitely... I, I actually like taking notes like that, um, you know, for work now, but uh, electronically so I can, you know, re, you know, right. go back and add things. You can't do that with pen and paper. Um, Just thinking of the... I was just stalling to think of an answer to the question. Here's how I would answer the question. And I'll see if either of you guys know why I would answer that this way. I'm going bench blue deadlift red. I could go black or red. I'm going to go red because it's the more notable color. And then squat. I'm going, uh, uh, since maroon is too close to mm, red, I will say squat close. is, is a tan squat wow. is tan. Wow. Yeah. So squats, is tan deadlift er is red and bench heavy is blue uh i okay i'm gonna the Ke kevin you can tell us the correct answer to this after we go because you probably <laughs> put more thought into this but i'm gonna yeah. go close to you tanner and say i think squat for some reason in my head that's red bench is definitely blue i think that's a good color and i think deadlift is black that makes more sense to me red blue black mm -hmm. all good contrast between those colors they work good all good gym colors mm -hmm. too. Kevin, what do you Kevin? got? Yeah, for for mine, um, the uh, the old uh, powerlifting gym I used to go to, they actually marked their barbells. Oh, with, sure. With eight. Um, and I'm pretty sure the deadlift bars were marked with the red tape. The squat bars with blue tape, and they didn't have bench bars, so those were just power bars that they left out. Right. Um, so you could say silver. So that, that's, that's one way to look silver, at it. Silver, yeah, silver, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but then I, I think I just picked a color. Uh, so I, I color coordinate my uh, uh, my spreadsheet that has all my, you know, I'm a big spreadsheet guy. Yep. So I have everything, you know, color sorted. So I have squats as, as yellow, bench as red, and deadlift as blue. I don't know why I picked those colors initially, but that's just kind of how they fell out. It's like a, it's like uh, a But what I've done with that vibe. then is – is the uh, um, the lifts that are kind of in between the two kind of get mm. color sorted in between that then? So like, right? You know, if bench is red and deadlift is is blue, I kind of have like rows and back stuff as as purple. Or if okay, uh, bench, yeah. what'd you say? If bench is red, then uh, close grip uh, pause bench is just dark red or light red yeah. or, you know, yeah. yeah, like pink, yeah. very, you know, the bench, the bench, uh, the bench accessories are just an off red. It's kind of like a heat exactly. map, you know, when and it's like, exactly you ever right. see that where things yeah, like just yeah, slowly yeah. change their color, the farther they get from the, the, right. the main topic. Uh -huh. Very okay. So kind of at a glance, I can see what I'm doing for the day. Excellent. Um, I like that. That's a good question. I think that we'll, we'll get, get to hear some other people's answers on that. I don't know. If that, I, I don't feel definitive that there is a right and wrong answer to that, like some questions that we've had. In you this have your game. druthers. Yeah, there's definitely druthers subjective. there. I think as long as, yeah, I think it's very subjective, but I think there people could have some good uh, reasons for that. And Big Kevin, we'll see you in uh, July this year, right? In July, yes, I'll be there. Your first uh, your first pilgrimage to the Mecca, of, so to speak. Yes, <laughs> you'll, first, you'll, time at, first time to Western Northeast South Dakota. You'll be marking off all kinds of things on your uh, Hall of Fame card for that one. Yeah, if I, if I play my cards right, I will uh, mark off the 12th item while I'm there. Oh, excellent. Wow. Well, we'll, yeah. we'll get a uh, Hall of Fame silly pint ready for you. I'm looking forward to the, the induction ceremony put on by <laughs> uh, some of the existing members. There might be a – maybe there will be a, a formal 15, uh, 15 – <laughs> achievement ceremony of, of sorts. We got some things in the works for that. So stay tuned. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, great question. Thanks, big Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. All right. Thanks guys. See Looking you later. Forward to the video from Dr. Mike later. <laughs> uh, this, this will be discussed on table talk in a few months. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. See you, Kevin. See you guys. <laughs> great question there, huh, Tommy? Yes. Very good. Creative. I like it. 
What do you think? Should we give uh, Big Zach a call? Hopefully, if uh, the phone will dial out this far, <laughs> just across it's town, go a long ways. Yeah, uh, to come back to you to then Zach. run through the internet to me in Sioux Falls. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, ah, Big Zach, is that you? It is. Oh, ah, I can tell move. Zach is local because it's coming in crystal clear. <laughs> It is a nice connection. You can tell because we, we, him and I are actually just using one of those coffee can strings. <laughs> That's between what our it houses is. Because we're not that far away. What, what, uh, how would you directionally describe what part of a, a Western Northeast South Dakota you live in, Big Zach? Oh, God, that's a question. Uh, <laughs> Western, South, no, Southwestern. Yep. Southeast. No, South, Southwestern, Northwest South Dakota. Okay, so uh, do you live southwest of the post office? Yes. Okay, <laughs> yep. all right. <laughs> all right, we're on the same page then. We're speaking the lingo. <laughs> oh, I'm, try- I'm trying to hang up on the Zoom. Oh, oh there you go. To, uh... it's, like, it's like, were you getting a little reverb or something? Yeah, it was like an echo from me, and then I hear you guys twice. Oh, it's like when you on Zoom on your phone. I was, yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. Right. Yeah, that would do it. We're this is like we have to be like a radio call in show where we're like, oh, make sure to turn your radio down in the background. <laughs> oh, well, I did have white noise on in the background as I'm holding the baby, so. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, be bothered. Uh, just put the Massonomics podcast on. Maybe put it right to the sound sleep. of our voice. Yes, <laughs> it's very soothing. Yes, I oftentimes just leave my baby home alone and turn on Massonomics podcast on repeat, <laughs> and it's like, oh, I'm. It's like I'm there. Uh, he'll be fine. Well, that's how you and Mary make it out, isn't it? That's exactly right. That's that's our babysitter is the Massonomics podcast. <laughs> uh, Big Zach, for anyone that doesn't know, is a Massonomics gym member. He's a supporting member. He's a crew member and uh, right from right here in Western Northeast South Dakota. He's an early morning crew guy at the gym. Big Zach, did you have a question for us tonight? I did. Big Jory and I were talking the other day. Uh-oh, and we know. Sounds like trouble already. <laughs> <laughs> We know that the current Massonomics gym is a pretty good location, but we were curious what would make you move locations in Western Northeast South Dakota. If the question is what would make us move, the answer is a, if the landlord would no longer let us be there anymore, that would make us move by necessity. (laughs) Don't have many options. Well, I don't want that outcome. Of course. Uh, We have to stay off the grass then. That's true. <laughs> if I, the probably if I got on the grass too much, that's how we would get kicked out. Uh, so be on, I'll be extra careful this summer as far as the grass goes. The other possibility I would say, which there's, I don't want to give anyone the indication that there's any short term plans of this, but <laughs> the other thing that would cause us to move is if I ever uh, made a decision to to not rent anymore, and if I owned the location, that would mm. be like the one other possibility that I would move. And the reason I would do that is just because if I own the location, I then know that it's uh Massonomics gym has the ability to exist as long as I want it to with nobody else's, uh, you know, nobody else has a say in the matter then basically at that point, you know, like I don't, there's no other variables other than myself and wanting it to continue to exist. So I would, I would like controlling some of those variables. I don't dislike the renting. The renting actually works really good because there's less um, stress involved that way almost. But owning the f- the building would reduce stress in a different way that I just know there's no possibility that I ever have to worry about anything to do with the landlord. Well, I'm uh, about I'm a couple episodes behind, but hearing about the hot dog heater that you have in your garage, maybe yeah. a freestyle Massonomics gym. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Well, the, during COVID, when Massonomics gym, with everything that was going on, when Massonomics gym had to close for about three weeks, I did have a pop up uh, home gym. In my, that was only in the, so the two stall garage. Did you have so the combo rack? Just, did you take that in there? Uh, I brought took the black the black uh, that black squat stand combo rack, uh, the rogue bench, and then I brought just uh, a horse stall mat to deadlift on, and I actually did not mind it. It was it was fun for uh you know I mean, all things considered, with everything going on, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, that's I, I guess that's how I'd answer that question is hopefully. I, I hope we ha- that we're not doing any moving anytime soon, but those are the scenarios where I could see it being a possibility. Nice. And you got to mark off number 11 on your Hall of Fame card, I'm guessing, exactly. I will, yes. 
Uh, do you know what? how many are you at so far? I saw you guys got the Instagram post the other day. You and Jory did. <laughs> we did. Yep. I think eight or nine. I can't, oh, I can't right. remember. Because I haven't competed in – I was in. The, I was at the Lift Hard Live Easy, but I did not compete, and I'm not current scheduled to compete yeah, either. You're uh, almost in a great – I mean, I, I think you're not having adjacent, compete is the correct, but you did. Uh, for anyone that's listening, uh, Big Zach did sing the national anthem for the Lift Hard Live Easy Classic, and, boy, Big Zach has some pipes on him. I still tell the story of when you told me that Tommy called and said, Hey, can he actually sing? And like, well, <laughs> he's going to be the one with egg on his face. So. Yeah, so I'm like, I don't know. I can't imagine someone wanted to take a joke that far that they're going to be the one <laughs> pretending to sing the national anthem in front of several hundred people. They're going to, I'm like, that's probably going to be the embarrassment on uh, them. I you totally know, like, forgot I, about I, that. That is very yeah. funny. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh but in any case you did not disappoint and you came through came through very clutch and you know if you want a job again this year i think you can uh you can have your job again well the rumor i heard was big tron and i were going to try to do it duet. oh duet. i like yes. that. get some harmonies going there we hey, go Hey, if you guys can work on that <laughs> what about could you guys do a thing where like Someone blows the kazoo, and it's like the Massonomics crew quartet, almost sort of thing, you know, like where where oh, you the do pitch pipe, yeah, like where, and then it's it's kind of like the Shriners before the circus, you know how uh, it's, it's like, like a barbershop quartet of sorts. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Could, I've taken a few conducting classes, but that's about as far as I could go about. Uh, well, multiple you're an expert people together. in our eyes, so you're good to go. <laughs> uh, Big Moto says barbershop crew tent. <laughs> there we go. And Tr- Tron also says he's in. So uh, you guys, you guys got some practicing to do. You got several months here yet, so uh, don't time can't be your excuse. <laughs> uh, uh, great question, Big Zach, and uh, I suppose we'll see you around Western Northeast South Dakota. I'll I'll be on the lookout yeah. for you the next time I get gas in Aberdeen. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you'd recognize who it was or not. <laughs> yeah. <With> enough people. <laughs> I, it's, you know, you just never know. You never know who you're going to run into when you're in Aberdeen. That's how it goes. <laughs> All right. Well, enjoy your night, gentlemen. Good stuff. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Big Zach. See ya. Great questions again from Big Zach. Do we want to interject with anything, or should I just hop on another caller? Um... I said, let it, let it get going. Let it ride, man. Don't, if it ain't broke, don't something. That's right. We are never going to get to all of these as I'm looking at this here and thinking mm. we've only we might have to four. do a more intense screening process next time. Yeah, we, we better try this one. And now I've got to the point where I haven't written down numbers, uh, but I can do this on the fly. So next, we're going to call the owner of Freedom Fitness Equipment. Oh, okay. And I believe he's got a little question for us. Well, I mean, hopefully, oh, everyone's actually, got a little. Oh, actually, have question. you hit the call button yet? It's it's Seven, calling now. Zero oh. four nine. Oh, okay, that one got forwarded. Uh, do you got a cold one you want to crack into over there? Yeah, let's crack in a cold one. Actually, why don't we, why don't we do that? I can say now that uh, you know I'm a home gym owner and all, I got a rack and everything. Uh, no, I'll brag about it. Uh, man, having a drink spotter, I could not imagine being the loser, having a gym and not having a drink spotter. <laughs> You'd have to be one pathetic loser. <laughs> and I would maybe even extend that to saying, I couldn't imagine being the loser having only one drink spotter. Man, my How rack, many do you have set up right uh, now? Currently, I got three on the rack. And yeah, as far good. as I'm concerned, that, that still might be too low of a number. You can never really take drink safety mm-hmm. overly serious. We're so we're on to the last uh, last of these, aren't we? I'm yes. doing the Lamone, and what are you doing? I'm at the Cran Raspberry. Um, all right. Mm. Still, give this still one. sit safely in the three and a half region. Yeah, this is a this is good three and a half all day. Yeah. Cran Raspberry is a little stronger flavor than the other ones. Yeah, I didn't love that one. It's okay. I just I didn't I wasn't in love with it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna. Try Mr. Freedom Fitness Equipment again here. Give him a second shot. Seven, zero. Oh. Either put his number in wrong, or that's probably pretty much it. Or you've been blocked. Um, 
Let's try this one. Should we stick to Western Northeast South Dakota for one more? <laughs> the next on you know, the those list. seem to be more reliable, so maybe. Yeah. We're going to try Big Jory, Big Zach's training partner, as a matter of fact. Coincidentally, he's just next in line. I think these two are in cahoots of uh, getting their Hall of Fame cards checked off. Oh, actually, I had his number in my phone even. Is it ringing, Tanner? I don't get the rings for some reason. Oh, yeah, it, it is ringing. Okay. Sorry. So that was just silence on your end. Yeah. <laughs> I think that'll come through on the recording. I think it does, it? yeah. Hi, you reached Oh. Oh, that was his chance. We're going to move down the line. We'll see if he pops on the live chat or sends me a message. A lot of times right after we call, then I get a text from him 10 seconds later that says, call again. We're going to go to Big Ben, different part of South Dakota for mm. this one. A lot of South Dakota ones mm-hmm. in the off the – the jump here though i guess it's part of the risk you take with the live show it is ringing again okay big ben is that you yes it is can you hear me we can hear you loud and clear buddy awesome I guess they'll let anyone on this podcast these days, won't they? Evidently. <laughs> uh, Big Ben, are you in South Dakota right now? Yes, I am. What what region of the state? Almost perfectly centered, central. Yep. <laughs> you're Not a cent- the most exciting you're... geographically spot to describe, but. <laughs> it works best when you're kind of in a corner. <laughs> yeah, it works best if you're in a corner. Um, Big Ben, lifter at uh, last year's Lift Hard Live Easy Classic, coming back in uh 2024, I believe, correct? Yes, I'm doing strongman. Yeah, in the strongman this year and uh, getting to uh, mark off another check mark on your Hall of Fame card. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, uh, did you have a question for us tonight? Yeah, and my question was, have either of you driven a vehicle through water where both bumpers were underwater? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> That's a good. I I saw that and I'm like, this will be a good diversion from our last few questions. Where both yeah. bumpers were were underwater. Um, yes. Boy, I I can tell you right now, I have not done that. No, that's fairly deep water, and nope, I I can't say I have. Um, I'd be pretty leery of that, <laughs> if, especially sure. if the water if the water's moving at all. Then I'm very. Uh, that I know, like this is maybe something that just your your dad scare you into thinking, but. Uh, I think there's like if the wa- cur- if the water's moving, it doesn't take that much to be able to like uh, uh, move a vehicle off of its course, mm-hmm. you know. So I'd be a little nervous about that, and then I'd also be nervous about uh, water going places that it's not supposed to. So I'd be pretty scared if that happened. I would either uh, be horsing around in some vehicle I didn't care about, or it'd be a pretty pretty scary, uh, pretty dire scenario that we're in to try and get through. I think so. I have not. I would be nervous about it. Have you done that, Big Ben? Yes, I have a couple times. Just for the heck of it, or was it like uh, flooding around around pier sort of situation? Oh, at work. So I drive up to. Well, I actually drive into North Dakota, but I um, oh don't go there. <laughs> that was your Western first problem. South Dakota, West River, West River, South Dakota. There's a lot of low water crossings. And uh, one year, one of them was dry for only two weeks. And there's two weeks there where drove through, both bumpers were underwater. And the next week is even deeper. Wow. Oh. And you, you made it through no problem, though? Like this was, it was. Oh, pretty- yeah. It must have been a yeah. Buick LeSabre yeah, or something. What type of vehicle were no, you No, it, it, it was a four wheel drive pickup that's lifted. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And, so. so you chose to full. Ferry, or you chose to fjord the river. Yep, yep, it'd be Ford. It'd yep. be Ford, the low water crossing. Yeah. And I've uh, probably, well, not that deep, but I've probably done it mm, a dozen or more times up my service area mm-hmm. where I've driven forded 
low water crossings. Wait, so yeah. Were you in a Fjord F one fifty? I don't know. Actually, that's a that was a 2013 uh, Chevy 1500. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Excellent choice. Um, All right. Well, we appreciate that question. That was a good one. And uh, if we don't talk to you before then, well, we'll talk to you on the Discord, but we'll see you in July. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Thanks, Big Ben. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, you guys have a good night. Thanks. Yeah, you too. Mm-hmm. All right. Jory texted me. Like I said, we'll try him back quick. Okay. <laughs> Big Jory, is that you? It is. Were you letting the dogs out with the Baja men? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Who let the dogs out? Jory, 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 Jory. (laughs) You know, uh, my high school mascot was the Bulldogs, so to say I've heard that song a few times in my day would be an understatement. (laughs) I bet you have. Uh, Big Jory, we already had uh, Big Zach on the horn here tonight, and he was talking shit about you, so... um, now's your chance to to get your rebuttal yeah yeah, but uh Uh, we'll uh, have to settle that in the in the gym tomorrow morning uh big big jory is also a morning uh mastonomics gym crew like big zach is but uh big jory did you have a question for us here tonight uh yeah my question was uh when you guys are deciding what equipment to add into the gym what what is the process that goes into that is how you decide what you're going to add into the gym well, yeah, the new gym equipment. This one's yeah. easy for me to decide because I don't have a I don't have a voice. Well, this, uh, well, well what, how do I mean, you decide in your gym though? Oh, okay. Tanner, you go first. Yours has a more interesting okay. one. And actually, if I had to guess, I'd say this has also changed over time. This answer. That's true. At first, it was more necessity. You know, there was a real needs list. There's really not a needs list anymore. So a lot of it is my personal biases of what I think I want to get, and then a lot of it is. I just ask people, I'm always just asking people, hey, what do you think we should have or what do you wish we had or what's on your wish list? And honestly, for most of the people now in the gym, the most common They're answer like, just is, quit talking to me. Leave me alone, man. <laughs> I don't I know. know. <laughs> I'm right in the middle of a deadlift yeah. set. Why are you asking me what equipment we should you get? No boundaries at all. <laughs> uh, no, usually anymore, the most common answer is like, oh, I don't know. There's just not much. And that's usually kind of the case. So yeah, um, usually it's just, uh, well, I've been kind of buying some of the vintage stuff now, but I don't I guess the answer is it's whatever I'm feeling a little bit like, but I also do take the temperature of the room. You know, if there's a 10 people that all tell me we need to get this, then I'm kind of like, well, it doesn't really doesn't really even matter if I want it personally. If a bunch of people want it, I'm I'm excited about it then. Has too, that so. even been a thing with any pieces lately though? No, not anymore. That's why it doesn't really have that's why partly why I've bought so much of this vintage stuff, just because I, I think it's cool now and like we have, you know, kind of all the cool regular stuff. So it's just uh just adding stuff that's fun. Sometimes if I just see other gyms that have something cool that we don't i don't like that they get it and we don't so then i'll get it for that reason too <laughs> call that keep it yeah. up with the joneses <laughs> yeah so i'll do it i'll do, i'm not i'm not above doing that too uh, tommy how about you in the home gym um right now mine is very necessity driven uh you right know, it's i'm in the very early that's stages. an earlier stage yes, thing yeah, yes very right. much uh but i can also be a little picky with some niceties you know like i i, I don't have a budget of zero dollars so i don't have to just claw for anything I can get. So I can be a little picky with things. Um, but yeah, very much like with me, I've been working out long enough that I uh, very much know what I'm into and what pieces I want. So yeah, for me, it's just checking off those things that I know I need. And then as time goes on, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely look more into the, um, I don't know, like additional barbells or just like quality of life things, things that don't drastically change my workout, but just could make it a little more fun or interesting. Right. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that was a good question, Jerry. We appreciate uh, appreciate you asking that. Now you can mark not, mark off number 11 on the Hall of Fame card. All right. Getting one step closer. One step closer to the edge. And George's about to break. <laughs> <laughs> Need a little room to break. All right. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Jerry. Have a good night. See you later. <laughs> that was the <laughs> exact thing I thought of the second he said that to you. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think there's a problem if we're both thinking that. Uh, uh, one step that. closer. Oh, man. Wouldn't it be hilarious if all of a sudden we're like, God, you know what? People say one step closer a lot in daily <laughs> conversation <laughs> now. <laughs> Just willed it into existence. Make it a button. Yeah. I was like, I was in a meeting today, and they kept saying one step closer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next, we're going to try uh, Big Waffle Iron. Big Steve. Stephen. And it is ringing. I don't know if this phone connection goes all the way to the East Coast or not. All right, I'm going to hang up on him and go to the next one. <laughs> next, we got a couple Jakes in a row. So first, we're going to try Jake the Snake. Let's see if he's got a question for us. I believe he might. Hello? Big Jake, is that you? It is I. Uh, have you ever been uh, live on the Massonomics podcast before? No, I really? have not. Oh, I couldn't. I was thinking maybe you had been. Nope. This is actually the thing that's going to get me in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> is this twelve? Did we just? Did you just do twelve right now? This is this is twelve. I'm, oh well, congratulations! Wow. This is, that's we uh, were there for it. This, this is, is just like it's like seeing yeah. your young grow up and just achieve big things in life. <laughs> I. I feel really, really special right now. I'm li I'm just shaking. I'm going to grab a silly Hall of Fame silly pint and set it aside right now. Amazing. Amazing. Get, get your name added to the Hall of Fame list. Yeah, we've had several people <laughs> mark off already, but uh, nobody that was actually lucky number 12. Yeah, I uh, um, thought I was going to have to wait all the way till July when I got my one year of uh, being a supporting member, but... This 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 will do it. So I'm I'm pumped. Could say you took the fast track this time. Oh yes. <laughs> uh, for anyone that doesn't know, Big Jake is running the strongman portion of the 2024 Lift Hard Live Easy Classic. And for anyone that doesn't know, Big Jake competed in all three of the Massonomic Strongman Showdowns. So that's little that's little Jake history for you. Yes, sir. And like those strongman showdowns we're going to keep the lift hard live easy strongman fast paced and extremely exciting and uh would can't give anything away here and i i know you already know this but i just want to tease people is there is a little pe little special piece of equipment that showed up here this week uh <laughs> for the strongman portion of the lift hard live easy classic i i can't wait i'm 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 heading back to the mecca this weekend i'm gonna oh, okay good Give it a little test run, see what how it feels. I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about it. Yep, yep. So uh, we'll keep teasing people on that. But did you <laughs> did you have a question for us tonight, Big Jake? Yeah, I do have one very important question. It might come with an easy answer, but we'll see what you guys have come up with. So I'm going to list three things. You have to pick one of the three. So out of these three things, which one? Um, Never, ever get injured again in the gym. Never have a gym injury happen. Or I'm going to stop right there. That, that does sound pretty nice. Like, <laughs> or you got my it attention. does sound pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number two, never be tired again going to the gym. Okay. Or number, nice. number three, Always have enough time once you get to the gym. Never feel rushed again once you get there. I I like this scenario. I'm I, it's so easy for me. I'm picking never get injured because I can I can yeah. cope with the other variables enough. Injury is just one that I feel like even I mean you give it time. Injury is gonna whether you're it's just gonna get worse as you get older. I think and to just say like you're almost just impervious to injury. God, that just sounds like a that sounds like a the dream right there. Yeah, that's the answer for sure. Uh, because tired is a more temporary thing, and there's always caffeine if you need it. Yeah. And there's all you know, I can <laughs> I can be really uh, tired can, and go to the gym yeah. and still all of a sudden have energy. 
And I can get a good workout in even if I'm rushed. Mm-hmm. Sometimes mm-hmm. that's even, you know, I don't have a problem and that doesn't come up all the time. But the injury thing, that is the, if, I, if we could never get injured, I just, I mean, it'd, you'd be infinite amount of strong. <laughs> it feels like it'd be like, it would just be the sky is the limit of strength if there's never any injuries. And I guess maybe if someone's never been injured in the gym before yet, they wouldn't uh, choose that choice. Possibly, sure. you know, I could see someone that's never really experienced much of an injury. Maybe you'd say, oh, I don't give a shit about that. Like, let me never be tired. Now, <laughs> all my workouts will feel way better. But I would definitely pick the in- no injuries, too, without a t- yeah. I'd pick it a thousand times over and I'd be like, oh, my God, my life is it just fixed my lifting, my lifting days. Yeah, I, I, I fully expected that to kind of be the answer. But I thought yeah. maybe like Tanner might have like the idea like, well, I, you know, I've, I've always been able to work around right. when I've been there and like just the, you know, feel, uh, springy and spry every single time I go to the gym might be really sweet, you know, right. but could you also, could it also make the past injuries go away? <laughs> Are we waving the magic wand? Is everything better instantly? Because <laughs> if I could I wake up and like all that. the past ones went away, I'd be like, holy shit, I'm like, I'm like a god. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty incredible. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Good question. That's a great question. If, if only that was, that was a real choice we yeah, got to Yeah, now make. work on that solution. Yeah. Tell me what that is. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be in the lab making sure that we can figure that one out for you guys okay. excellent <laughs> Thanks, Jake. Uh, good question we'll we'll have the strongman the secret top secret strongman implement ready for you this weekend all right i can't wait all right excellent okay. see you see you jake the snake hey boys see have you. a good one that's hey, a good question jake. i like that let me call. I got one more number ready. Let me call that one, and then maybe we'll read a couple ads yes. and maybe do a little supporting our supporting members, that sort of thing. Then this is also another Jake. So as long as, long as we're on a Jake hot streak, we'll uh, keep that rolling. Ah, uh, the Jakes. Shooting Jakes. <laughs> this one should be Dr. Jake, Big Dr. Jake mm. from State Farm. I've heard of him before. Might be on con call, though. I don't know. Your call. Hello. Ah, Big Jake, is that you? It is. Is this the Massonomics podcast? You're alive on the Massonomics podcast. We did. What an honor. We didn't know if you were you're a working man tonight or anything. So. No, thankfully not. Just on call. I'm okay, assuming. Excellent. I just like to picture though that on you have call your for hands the like, podcast. Yes. <laughs> like well, the picture course, you have yeah. your hands like you're working on some surgical procedure on someone, but you're still talking to us. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, please yeah. put it on the wireless headset yes. for me while I'm doing this. Uh, yes, good sir. Can you hold up the phone to my ear? Thank you. <laughs> uh, excellent. Uh, you are on the Massonomics podcast, indeed. Um, uh, Jake from state farm competed at the 2023 lift hard live easy classic. Are you signed up again for 2024? I am not, but oh, hopefully, no. hopefully we'll be on the wait list just in case. Okay. okay, good. Well, we'd, we'd love to have you here again. Uh, if mm-hmm. not, and I guess the only silver lining is, uh, uh, for anyone that's not able to make it again, it's just one more new person that gets to get in on the action too. That's the, that's the silver lining there. If you, if you don't make it this year. This is very true, and I'm hoping to come up and at least uh, support the crew. You know? yeah, yeah, excellent. It's not too far for you, right? No, no, it's only five hours. Oh, you almost can't afford not to come then one exactly. way or another. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, let's see. So did you have a question for us tonight? Mm, let's see. Hmm. How is the ankle doing? I think everybody wants to know. Oh, <laughs> uh, the ankle is progressing slowly but surely. Actually, maybe you have some advice for me here. I don't know, but uh, uh, no, the ankle is uh, progressing. Uh, this Thursday, so two more days from now, will be exactly four weeks from date of injury, and um, it is getting better. It is still swollen somewhat. It is. Still it definitely, big. Uh, it's it noticeably looks. You it would take you a, a glance to know which one it was. And, uh, but it is, uh, it is active. It is getting marginally better almost daily still, you know? So, um, I don't notice it maybe daily now, but overall from like 
last week to this week, I can definitely say I can do stuff with it now this week that I couldn't last, and it is uh, slowly getting better, and I am therapying it pretty rigorously, and I am also, like, testing it pretty regularly uh, in the gym with uh, deadlifting is going decently, and then uh, now I'm able to squat on, a, like, the 15-degree slant board, which causes my knee to not have to travel forward near as much. So that's actually feeling somewhat decent, so it's giving me something to do there. It's pretty impressive because it looked terrible. <laughs> it was horrific. Like it, I feel in your like medical I'm not, opinion, I don't want to have just gotten rid of it right there. Just got over with it, <laughs> taking it off. <laughs> I think so. Okay. Yeah. Well, I he's a doctor, he, so there you have it. The Tanner. next one, one footed lifter. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that could be. I could have changed my Instagram <laughs> handle to that. That one footed monster. You could have been. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so it uh it was it was crappy but hey you know that's somebody's got to do sometimes it sometimes <laughs> that's the shake of the dice right yep it's it's just the cross you bear yeah that is uh so yeah it's we're uh progress not perfection is where i'd put the cankle at right now the good old cankle well that's good to hear yeah are you uh are you let's see are you already you're already in the 12 uh 12 achievement ring of honor yeah so i am yep. have, have you been is here have you been on the podcast before have you had your voice on the podcast already no this is the first time so oh. this puts me even closer to the coin yeah no, okay 13 or 14 now then uh 13 13 okay, okay. Jeez. We're going to be careful to make sure we don't call anyone that marks off 15. I was going to say, we're going to be really, busting out a lot of coins yeah, if we keep this up. That could yeah. be problematic. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, well, great question, and I got me a chance to talk about the old cankle, so thanks, uh, Big Always. Jake. Of course. You thanks. fellas have a good night. Thanks, right, Jake. See you later. Bye. Boy, I almost just hit leave meeting at the end of that oh, on my Zoom. For I would have been lost. I would have just had to start <laughs> calling my friends and ask them if they have questions for me. <laughs> <laughs> be like hey ryan anything you want to know about me <laughs> ask me something good to put on air here <laughs> ask me about my wiener <laughs> okay this episode is brought to you by build fast formula build fast formulas are our supplements of choice over here at the massonomics podcast and they should be your supplements of choice also you can check them out at buildfastformula.com uh, they're based out of Watertown, South Dakota, just down the road uh, from both of us, really. They're in between Tom Well, and they're I. down the road from you. They're up the road from me. So it's... That's true. That's that's actually true. They're over and down the road to me, mm-hmm. and they're just uh, we'll say this. up they're the road. just around the corner, we can say. Yeah, yeah, around the bend, <laughs> for sure. Uh, and they've got a good uh, good variety of supplements there. Some of my favorites, Vaso Blitz, heard as talked about. Uh, Chris Duffin is the formulator of these uh, supplements, and we had him on the podcast a while back ago, a while back, and we talked about Vasoblitz pretty in depth. But that's their dual nitric oxide, uh, no caffeine pump support supplement. Then they also have their Full Blitz, is their fully loaded pre workout caffeinated formula, and then their eighty twenty um, protein powder. That's my personal favorite. I get the chocolate of some sort flavor. Chocolate, you cannot go wrong with that one. Yeah. It's French for chocolate, and um, that's my favorite. My other favorite thing about them, discount code Massonomics will save you 10% on every order that you get from them. If you choose to purchase any of their items in a, uh, oh, what's that called where you order things on repeat? A subscription model. A prescription, I believe. Yes, the prescription is more cowbell and more build fast formula supplements on a subscription model, save you an extra 10%. You can couple that with code Massonomics that saves you 20% off of your entire order at buildfastformula.com. Okay, Tanner. Um, this next ad, this next sponsor, I should say, um, I'm going to ask you a few questions, okay? And this isn't rhetorical. I want you to okay. answer, okay? Are All you right. ready? Yeah. Uh, do you like squatting? Yeah. Yes, I do. Do you like deadlifting? Yes. Yes, I like that even more. Do you say you like all American things? Uh yes, I okay. do. I do um, like all American. Do you like twenty nine millimeter things? Ah, yes. You now like, you're starting you, to speak my you language. You yeah. like that too? That's still. I'm still. Yeah, that's just, okay. just the right da- diameter for me. Okay. Um, let me see if I can find something else that you might like. Do you like? Um, are you a big starting strength guy? 
Well, I'm fully aware of starting okay, you're strength. Aware. I wouldn't that, say that's I'm a close enough. Okay, guy. that's close enough. Yeah. Well, yeah. if any of those words I just said, are you a fan of Texas monsters? Yes. Okay. Well, if any of those Love words I Texas just said monsters. also speak to you, then I think you should check out the Texas Power Bars website. They make squat bars. They make deadlift bars. They make the original Texas Power Bar. They make a Texas bench bar even. I missed that one. I missed the bench bar. They make a Texas bench bar. They make Cerakote bars. They even make starting strength bars if that's something that you're into. Um, Texas Power Bars was founded by Buddy Caps, and they've been banging these things out for decades. So they know a thing or two about a thing or two when it comes to making a good old power bar. If you want to get a Texas power bar of yourself for yourself, make sure to check out texaspowerbars.com. And while you're there, uh, or while you're placing that order, maybe say Massonomic sent you. I'm sure that they will enjoy that. So thank you, Texas Power Bars. little supporting our supporting member segment. This is something we do every every week of the podcast. We have people that support the Massonomics podcast monetarily through our supporting membership. We would love to have you become a supporting member, or at least if you're a regular listener of the podcast, at least check check out the options there and see if there's anything we could talk you into. It's uh, massonomics.com slash join. Correct, Tommy? That is correct. And that's where you can get signed up and see our different options that are available out there. And uh, you get things like access to our Discord community. It's the only way you get in on that. You get to listen to the podcast live each week if you choose to. You get our early info on our drops and pretty much everything that's going on in the Massonomics world, actually, you get to know about earlier and ahead of time. And you could get on supporting our supporting members. So a couple of them this week. Uh, Big Dan Mercer competed at Tucson's Strongest Man. Mm. And he took fifth out of eighth in his class. So good job, Big Dan. Good stuff. Big Hannah was on uh, the guest on Unpaid and Underrated, our bratty little sister podcast uh, with hosts <laughs> Big Joey and Big Keith. Check it out each week. A new episode each Tuesday. This week was Big Hannah. So give that a listen. Find out more about uh, these other supporting members. And then last thing on a serious note, actually, that we wanted to mention mm. is we lost a crew member this last week, which is uh, terrible uh, that it happened, obviously. Sucks. Um, the only, like, actual silver lining out of this is just seeing the support from all of his fellow, uh, you know, Massonomics crew members from acro- across the globe, honestly, like, that are choosing to rally around him, you know, try and support his family in any little way that they could. But big Matt Harris... His big hat on um, uh, in our Discord and also on his uh, Instagram. He is from uh, Virginia. Let's see. I think he was, he's Richmond, Virginia is where he is. He's a police officer. He's 31 years old, so gone way too soon. Uh, so rest in peace, rest in power, Big Matt. And he's one of those guys. We we never met him in person, correct, Tanner? Like we've never. No, uh, no, yeah, we've never met him in person. Never but met him. One of those, but like, it felt like we knew yes, him even without meeting like him. Like he's been such a longtime supporter of everything that we do, from yep. from being in the Discord to being commenting on things on Instagram to buying stuff. Like that's just a name that to me goes back so long with Massonomics. And so when we saw that news, it was it was shocking. It doesn't it doesn't seem real yeah. that these people that you you feel like you have this internet bond with or that you really do have this internet bond with uh, to see them go to. It is sad. It, it really sucks. Yeah. I really enjoyed Matt had a very good sense of humor mm-hmm. and uh, was not what really, he didn't do it all the time, but when he did, he really was able to come out with some really good memes yes. that he would share with the group. So I always enjoyed uh, his sense of humor that he had with the group. He was also a big, he loved a good Zins meme. <laughs> uh-huh. So he would on occasion <laughs> send me a good Zin meme. And I always, always got a kick out of that. And so there is a, uh, you know, there is a GoFundMe for his family, and uh, I would just comment it was just uh, pretty wild to see the number of uh, Massonomics crew members that were supporting that. You know, I know all these names. Even There's even a lot of names in there of people that a lot of the other crew wouldn't even know their crew because they're not actively mm-hmm. in our Discord and stuff like that, but yet they're supporters, and just so many people that uh, chose to support, um, you know, do a little bit to help help out his family in a difficult time. So if anyone 
is interested in that, you could DM us or let us know, and we could get you that link. I assume it's still still an option there to uh, contribute to that fund, but let just shoot me a shoot us a DM if you're interested in that. Uh, but rest in peace, Big Matt. Okay, now we are going to get back uh, to more Collins. I I'm just not real confident we're going to get to all of them this time. I don't know if we've ever gotten so many as we've gotten submissions as we got this time i don't know if it's because of the hall of fame card oh, and everyone's trying yeah, to get in but i'm making just, it more desirable yeah i'm just going to keep taking them in order and we'll just get through as many as we can get and uh we had I guess to basically that's the, the f- give people this the f- really shiny incentive to call us you know that's how we right. got engagement <laughs> right um so i guess it's just going in order of when you submitted them and we'll get through as many as possible and if we don't get you this time hopefully we can get you next time so this will be big Matthias. Big uh Big Matthias. Let's see if we can get him on the horn here. Holy smokes, this is Matthias. Big Matthias, that is in fact you, it sounds like. Yes, sir, it is. Just the guy we were looking for. How's it going? You're live Sounds on the good. Mathonomics podcast. Awesome. All right. Have you ever been on before? I have. It's been, oh, shoot, two, three years. I let, think let I was know, on the first one. Let me know if you can hear this. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> what is that, Stain? <laughs> that was Stain. <laughs> no way. They've been waiting you all night for you sh- to say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you think you were on the first call-in episode? I believe I was. I actually left a, I was an RA in college, and I was in a meeting, and I said, oh, I got to take this important phone call. And I walked out. So what a boss move. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, what important phone call is this guy? He's getting? only an RA. How many important phone calls can he have in a night? <laughs> exactly. Uh, our, let's see. You, you were going to be signed up for the lift hard leave easy classic, but can't do it. Is that right? Or am I confusing you with someone else? No, I wish I was. My plan was to do it. Uh, well, my plan was USAPL raw nationals yep. instead of that made the mistake should have done signed up for the lift hard live e- easy classic too, but didn't get signed up for raw nationals in time. And same thing with the lift hard live easy. So well, do you, need to, do you need to be on the wait list? Actually, I would love to, I got to talk to the old boss first, but okay. there's actually well, something. Le- if that is a legitimate opportunity, oh, that I is. Uh, if uh, if you want to get on the wait list, either in uh, in Discord, you can let him know, or you can uh, just DM him. Um, big through Dave. Instagram, it's big Big Dave, the meat director, sweet. Big Dave Stensland, and yeah, let him know you want on the wait list. Oh, and sweet! It yeah. is very possible you could, could uh, have a chance to get in on it if you wanted to. Well, that would be awesome. I need to make my Hall of Fame card. So, yeah, you all well, here's your. Well, you already had this one checked off, then I guess. Yeah, so I nothing, did. Nothing new yeah. for you here. Uh, <laughs> did you have a question for us tonight? I did. It's um. So we've got the the big relay or the great relay, I think it's called, coming up with the your eighty fives. Um. So I just want. I had an FMK around some relays. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so right. FMK fifteen hundred meter, meter relay. Uh, the B, the beer mile, um, shoot. What was my last one? Jeez. Hold on. I have, I have it in my notes. <laughs> yeah. Or a three legged relay. FMK, <laughs> the beer mile, the three legged relay or the 1500 meter relay. Mm. That's okay. Well, uh, when you say 1500 meter, meter relay, we're saying like we, you run a lap, correct? That's what you're getting at. Oh, no, I'm saying you, you and oh. your team of four, you got to run 1,500 meters and then pass the baton off. Oh, each off person's running 1,500 time. meters. So okay. it's like a four by four, four mile. Yeah, yeah okay. Big, okay. Damn. Well, I'm killing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a kill. Well, but the beer mile, you're still running the same amount. <laughs> right? Is that what you said, the beer mile? Beer. Yeah. I don't know. Is beer where each person runs a lap and you, it has a beer then, though? Is that, and then that, or uh, is that what that is? Good question. And this one, I'm going to go with the beer is the other relay partner. You're still running the mile. Oh, okay. Uh, and then check the beer. Yeah, a beer every lap. A beer every lap. Oh, a beer yeah. every lap. Okay, God. 
<laughs> that's at least good entertainment. That would be everyone. entertainment, man. That would be yeah. uh, that'd be a work in the system right there. I think you'd feel that. Also, way. maybe for someone that's not as good a runner, maybe a chance to play some catch up if you're a good drinker. Very true. You know, if you're going against someone that's an awesome runner, but uh, you know, really struggles to get a beer down by that fourth beer, they're gonna be they're gonna be struggling to do that too. You know, and maybe yeah. you could pace your miles pretty reasonably, although. By the end of it, that would really be sloshing around, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, four cans of beer sitting in there. That'd be... Although a three-legged relay uh, would be particularly hard for me on the cankle right now. Too. <laughs> that seems like an accident waiting to happen, honestly. Yeah, yeah. do you tie up... I don't love any of these. I don't love any of these if I'm going to For you, be Tanner, it brings the question up of, do you tie up the cankle and let the cankle yeah. be, be bound, or is the cankle your free ankle that's supporting you? Because neither one seems very advantageous to you. I know. I really would feel nervous about having it tied to another person in But particular, do you also like I the think. idea of that being like the your, your one ankle that's going to save you, though? <laughs> no. There's not a great... Great rule there. Also, like in any of these, could a chicken bake be the baton? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Maybe. in uh, I think in all three of them, it'd be the preferred baton. In Western Northeast South Dakota, we used to have the Big Mac uh, relay, where um, the coach. It was kind of a fun thing, and at the end of it, the coach had to eat a Big Mac. Each of the oh, I've never, coaches had to eat I've a Big Mac. I've never heard of this. I don't even know what yeah. this is. Yeah, it was uh, like the Big Mac relay, yeah. Would it be in actual track meets, or when would they do this? Yeah, so it was like the end of the track meet, yeah. And it'd be like... Is it along with like the... uh, Sorry, go ahead. Would it be like a a once-a-year thing, or would this happen multiple times? Yeah, once, no, once-a-year thing. It was like at a a meet in Aberdeen, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's kind of (laughs) cool. Yeah, and they had to eat it. I don't know why it was the Big Mac, but yeah. Right um, after the big man's hundred or whatever it was. Right, right, right. Whereas uh, we we would do that on a case. Actually, what we would do is sometimes we'd get all the throwers to just run the hundred meter dash together. <laughs> you know, it'd be like yes. one heat of just all of the throwers, and it'd be like no one would be trying that hard. But at the same time, you didn't want to get beat by the you other guys. So last, kind of did, yeah. <laughs> right, right. You know, so then like everyone starts trying harder and harder because you like don't really want to lose still. Um, I am going to kill just the boring old mile uh, 1500 relay. I am going to marry the beer mile <laughs> for the just for the antics of it. And then I would uh, F the I would F the sack race right in its A because I feel like it wouldn't be good for my cable at all. <laughs> That's a good I, answer. Uh, I, you know. <laughs> I, I don't have a bad angle, but I I kind of... I'm, I'm, you probably would after that. I, I go I, I, I ride with your logic there. I think that all makes sense to me. I, I can't really make any uh, good arguments against changing that. So I think I'll go with what you said, Tanner. Okay. Uh, and also, uh, Big Matthias. Sometimes, yes, do, do people ever call you Matt then, or is it always Matthias? They Some people do, but it's usually because they can't say Matthias. Okay. I was actually surprised. You guys got it right the very first time. Usually nobody ever does. So Yeah, sometimes uh, on your on your cards, do I ever write Matt or do I always write Matthias? Um, I think it's a mix of both. Yeah, I think sometimes <laughs> um, I do write Matt. Uh, um, what's your Instagram handle? I am uh, C Poppy on instagram <laughs> but but say it let your say it how you would like your like if you say see poppy that you don't really understand what it is it's uh yeah what I'm is it? cpap p <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big cpap user over here so i didn't incorporate it somehow and uh i think if, if i remember right in your bio it says built different <laughs> and then in parentheses worse <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, that, that's really good. <laughs> also, you are, you are strong though. What's your best total at what weight class? So my best total uh, was a USPA meet sixteen oh four at one sixty five. Yeah, I'm that's really still good. trying to chase that in the USAPL, but that deadlift bar, or that stiff bar, is killing me. So. Yeah, old stiffy. Yeah. So do you actually have a CPAP? I do. I really. Yeah, I think mine's not because I'm huge i wish it was but (laughs) it's actually genetic so uh not to embarrass my mom but she has a cpap too she's a snorer and yeah i just got lucky with it so yeah it yeah truly changed my life though i was sleeping all the time falling asleep in class but 
that's the most anabolic thing you can get is a CPAP. So, uh, this episode brought to you by CPAP. Big CPAP. <laughs> Possible Got their paws all over <laughs> Excellent. Uh, well, great question. We uh, appreciate that. And we'll, let's get you on that wait list if you got any interest. For sure. I'll talk to my wife right now. My wife. <laughs> there you uh, go. All right. See ya. <laughs> Thanks. I'll see you. That was a good one. Yes. Very good. Let's see. This next one, I think, is uh, Big Cam. And the cam is also in the in the uh, Zoom right now. Okay. Well, he's shut that Zoom off, Cam. We're calling you. <laughs> Your call has been forwarded oh. to voicemail. Uh, is so. Did we decide? Is that actually a thing that if your phone doesn't recognize the number, it just automatically goes to voicemail? Some people's might do that. I do think that that could be a thing. I don't know. Oh, here he is. Big Cam, is that you? Oh, it's Big Cam. How are you guys doing? You you weren't screening our call, were you? No, I think it just has something to do with calls coming from America all the way down south here in Toronto. So. Oh, okay. So you're okay. you're in Toronto, okay, from our neighbors to the south. Yeah. But is this an American number that I called, or is this a Canadian number? No, it's a Canadian number. Oh, oh boy, okay, Tanner, the us. long distance bill. Long, Here we just go. Racking it up. All right, let's get to it, Cam. What do you got to say? No, just kidding. Uh, so you're a Toronto man. I uh, yeah, I live in Toronto now, but I, I grew up in a small town, so I'm not really a big city boy. In small town okay. Canada or small town America? Oh, small town Canada. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. And um, I I would assume this is your first time calling on the Massonomics podcast, isn't it? This is my first time. I've only been a supporting member for three or four months now. Oh, wow. Okay, okay great. Your time in this good awesome. then. So had you been listening for a while, or are you fairly new to the Massonomics podcast? Uh, fairly new. I picked you guys up when you were on uh, Table Talks. Oh, Excellent. Awesome. All that uh, all that hard work's well, paying off for I, us. I knew it. Like. I knew if we went there, we would pick up Cam, so it's all worth it, Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, and Big Cam, did you have a question for us tonight? I do. I need you guys to uh, settle an argument between my wife and I that we're having. Oh, boy. That's what we're good <laughs> at. Yeah, we settle wi- arguments <laughs> with our own wives all the time. Yeah, so she's. Uh, we both agree that whatever you guys pick is what's going to happen. <laughs> so she's training for ultra marathons and wow. she wants me to do her easy runs with her, which is about a five to 10 kilometer run once a week. Well, and first of all, I tell her five to 10 kilometers is not an easy run. <laughs> well, according to her, it is. She's training to do about 55 kilometers for an afternoon. So, yeah. Okay. And she wants you to, okay. Yeah. So I I'd convert this because some people might not know. So she wants you to do five to 10 kilometers once a week. You said, yeah, once a week. Okay, so for us uh, English units over here, five kilometers is about three miles. Ten kilometers about six miles. So yeah, this, this is a, right, right, yeah. so we're talking in one run. You're going to go three to six miles. You would go potentially three to six miles in one run. Oh yeah. Oh that's, no, that's God no! Don't run. do that. That's too. That's <laughs> way too freaking far. That that's is what too I far. think too. That is too far. Don't do that. Do not do not be running six miles at a time. I'd stay away from that too. <laughs> I'm going well, to go with a hard pass on that one. Perfect. That's that's really what I needed hey, to hear there, guys. You tell Thank her, you very much. Tell you tell her if she wants you to go run for like a mile, maybe two. That's a hard cap at two, I think. <laughs> I think I think All you right, draw so a lot. We'll say maybe a four, a four kilometer. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, line same. in the sand goes at that two mile mark. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Only about once about a week. three kilometers. About three k. That's all you got in you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. None of those five k's or anything. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no. No. We got you. Got gains to make. You can't be running them all away. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I can't be. Uh, it's not going to make me any stronger. It's not going to keep me strong. It's a waste of my strength. So. Hey. Not yeah, gonna get running you, like that. That's exactly right. I, we're all on the same page here, except maybe we, your wife. But I think after this, she'll see it from our side also. No, I'll let her know. <laughs> all right. Well, that's a great question. We appreciate it, Big Cam. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. All right. Thanks, stay Cam. safe down there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. That's it. <laughs> all right. Bye. <laughs> stay safe down there. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. It's Stay also safe. funny because it's down there. It's Toronto, <laughs> Canada, but it is <laughs> <Yeah>. down there. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> uh, we've had quite a few Western Northeast call Western Northeast South Dakota callers. What do you say about getting a uh, Crew Falls collar on the horn? Oh, we'll try uh, Big Paul. My backyard, you could say. Yep. See if he's got any special Crew Falls questions for us. Hello. Big Paul, is that you? This is Big Paul. They'll let anyone on this old podcast nowadays, won't they? They will. <laughs> uh, Big Paul, you're live on the show with Tanner and Tommy. We're excited to have you. The real question is, is can Tanner hear me from all the way across town? <laughs> yeah, Tommy. I, I can almost hear it like there. echoing through my backyard. I actually didn't put it together until right now. I think that's what that is. It makes sense. We've had a, lot, a few Aberdeen people on, and we just need to just even the score a little bit, get a little more Crew Falls representation. Perfect. That's what I'm here to here to represent. Uh, excellent. Did you have a question for us tonight? I did. More so for uh, Tommy across the way Good. is is will you train at Will Sweeties before me? Oh, actually. So should should I say? We have a little plan, Tanner. Should I say? Actually, we've never yeah. we've never announced this to anyone. This is just me and Tanner uh, brainstorming. But we thought it'd be at the very least uh, me. But if if Tanner ever made it down too, yeah. we thought it'd be really fun someday. If uh, you know, obviously we got to get Bryce's blessing, you know, his permission. We can't just be storming in there. But we thought it'd be really cool if we get a few of us and maybe do a little training vlog session for YouTube someday in perfect little sweeties yeah. gym. Get like you, Bryce, Grayson, any, anyone in the immediate area that wants to just come hang out and could be a fun little YouTube video. In. We thought, call the mayor back over. Yes, yeah. get the mayor back <laughs> over. <the> giant checkout. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, I guess so. You you've actually never trained there before. No, oh. I've been uh, been on, been on the horn with them to uh, train here coming up in the future, but. We'll see. Uh, see, I had assumed you'd been there before just because you've lived here longer than me. But, okay, that makes me feel not quite as bad. Um, I would, that's on my, I'm going to say right now, that's on my bucket list for 2024. 2024. I'd really like to make yep. that one happen. Well, the good news is he lives relatively close to Costco, so we could celebrate with uh, chicken bakes and sundays afterwards. Oh, man, even no better. Way. And we're also entering warm weather here, so it's like really, really hitting prime gym time. So, yeah. Yeah, it's prime. It's prime garage gym season or shed gym season, whichever <laughs> floats your boat. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. And uh, I would also comment: It looks like uh, you're training for the Lift Hard Live Easy Classics, going strong. It's hoping, hoping to finally get strong and stay strong. But yeah, we'll see. You're, you're a guy that's not holding anything back now. I know that much. <laughs> well, you fellas have a good night. See you in July. All right, All right. we'll see you then. If not before yeah, that, maybe before. Sweeties. Fingers crossed. All right. See you, Big Paul. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Thanks. Bye. Stay safe down there, Paul. Also, we got to... Uh, <laughs> also, stay safe down there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, also, we need to talk to Nathan Thomas. We want to organize a Watertown little training mm-hmm. session and a uh, little YouTube vlog for, you know, we could get you and I meet in the middle. Um, you start walking your way, and I would start walking mine, and we'd meet in the middle. And say we'd all go one step closer. And uh, yes, <laughs> yes, uh, we meet in the middle at uh, Nathan's. We do a little uh, at the Thomas's and Abby's, also supporting member at the Thomas supporting member house hold the gym at least, and do a little training session. Maybe get like Big Jake to come up from Brookings and get a few of us there and do the same sort of thing. That'd be pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Be a lot of fun. Okay, next uh, we're going to try Big Tron. Now we're going to oh. zip over to a different little – we're hit, hitting all the South Dakota areas in this one, aren't we? Yes. A lot of South Dakota. South, Dakota South Central, you could say. Yeah. That Big Mo said that we got to do a Brookings one at some point in time mm-hmm. too. Peterson Pump Parlor. How may I help you? Ah, Big Tron, you old son of a gun. Is that you? (laughs) Well, well, well. How the turntables. I guess they'll let any old uh, sorry son of a gun on here these days, won't they? (laughs) That they will. I thought you guys would have had a uh, more thorough screening process. (laughs) No, our standards are quite low. (laughs) (laughs) I think you already knew that. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you guys let me join, so yeah, I already knew what kind of establishment I was joining. <laughs> we're cut. We're catching all the corners of the, uh, you know, all the our Dakota bases. This episode. we just worked our way down we- south the interstate. And now we're heading west. Uh, yep. Um, big, big, uh, big Tron was in Crew Falls uh, this December for the December to remember. We definitely had a December to remember, didn't we? That we did. Yeah. It was. It that was, was fun. That was a lot of fun, wasn't it? <laughs> that that was. I don't want to overstate it, but it was a blast. <laughs> no, that was I, I that was the most fun I've had here, in quite but some that time. That was the best weekend of my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I I don't want to talk it up too much, but yeah. uh, you know, um, my my wedding day pales in comparison <laughs> as far as importance in my life. So yes, yes. and your wife is in the background <laughs> listening to this. So yeah, yeah. That. No, no. I'm out in the shed for yeah. some reason. I don't. I don't know why. Yeah. But uh, she prefers me out here. Yeah. Did you let her know you have to answer a call at ten uh, fifteen p.m. on a Tuesday night to talk to some of these people again? <laughs> uh, no, I told her I was going to go work on our taxes. Um, <laughs> Even better. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was actually uh, sick today, so she's uh, asleep. Uh, so. Perfect. Yep. <laughs> yes. Um, big, oh, Big Tron also, are you going to be here? Are you going to make it up for the Lift Hard Leave Easy Classic? I know we had talked, there'd been some discussion about it. Yeah, I I got a conference that yeah. week, but I should get back on Friday. Okay. So I, I should be able to roll up Friday evening, I think. Okay. Guys, You'll make uh, it. So, again, I don't want to use, use too much hyperbole here, but you might ruin some people's weekend if you don't show up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I guess if, if I don't come up, uh, there might be a, a, a angry mob coming down to, well, uh, to, to get me. So <laughs> Keith just said, you will be there Saturday or we're kicking you out. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you're obligated now. Uh, did you have a question for us tonight? I, I, I did. I had, um, I actually had a couple of questions, but I'll just go with, uh, the first one, which is a trivia question. And that is Tanner, do you remember what your first parody t-shirt you ever made was? I saw this question in there and it really made me think I'm like, this must be a pre massonomics question. <laughs> and then I'm think so here's what I, think. so for Tron and I went to high school together, uh, um, and then I'm thinking there was, there was actually two that come to my mind even, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I'm not sure what's even first, but here's what I remember about it. <laughs> you maybe <laughs> help me out of what I misremember or what, how you remember it. But I do remember one t-shirt there was, was a, a seven up parody shirt where it's, okay. where it said, uh, that one said wildcats say, and on the mm-hmm. back, it said, up yours. <laughs> and I know we had to dispose of those shirts. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one I remember was a Rocky, I guess like a Rocky parody shirt almost, where it was a mm-hmm. football shirt that it was Eat Lightning Crap Thunder. Oh, yes. And we ha- the coach had to take all of the shirts <laughs> and marker over the crap the thunder crap. really because the, some parents were upset about the crap thunder on it mm-hmm. and those are the first two that are coming to my mind but am i forgetting something else i i, I think you need to go back to <laughs> the year 2002 okay so when you were a when oh, when i was we a made senior a, we made senior shirts <laughs> yeah you and big right. darren <laughs> as freshmen in high school <laughs> That's made copies of our that senior O2 shirts. Yes. With my blessing. <laughs> yeah, so so Tron was a senior when we were freshmen and both Darren and I's sisters were seniors and we kind of you know through being buddies with Tron and then just like being annoying nuisances, we kind of like <laughs> tagged along into you know we were like probably more present in the senior culture than any of the freshmen needed to be. Like, is that like what you would describe it as or like, yeah, I mean, you, you guys were honorary seniors. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was just like, it was just accepted. Like when the senior well, class was meeting I think a lot for of, something, a lot of them didn't want to. It. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was enough of us that thought it was funny and yeah. didn't care. Yeah. And so... <laughs> That's what it was. Okay. So was that a uh, white shirt with black lettering? Is that what yes. that was? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just yep. said, what was the shirt? Did it just say I, Seniors O2 I, on it? I think it just said Seniors O2, and I can't <laughs> even remember if we had anything on the back. or I, Oh, I think it was we had all of our signatures 
Oh, you know, like that's we, what you know, like because we, we then sign. Darren and I like hand signed yes. all our names on the back of ours. Like yes. it just in marker, we just <laughs> yes. we just penned our own in. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure we went to like what was that place called? Um uh in Aberdeen. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm trying to where think. Or you could buy like model airplane yes, it and was, stuff. Uh, what was Klein's, that place called? Klein's. Klein, yes. <laughs> And yeah, they had like a get... press shirt thing there. <laughs> and we got seniors O2 shirts made. Yep. That's what, and we came to school wearing those and we thought we were so cool. <laughs> well, I remember uh, Darren came and like very sheepishly showed me the shirts yeah. and was like, hey, is, is it okay if me and Tanner wear these? <laughs> and I was, I thought it was hilarious. And I was yeah. like, not only is it okay, I'm, I'm pissed. Because if you guys would have told me, I just would have slipped a couple of extra shirts yeah. into the senior order. Right. Because I was the class president that year. And so so I right, right. I was in charge of filling out the order forms and oops, <laughs> I guess we got a couple extra ones here. But uh, uh no, yeah, that was That's what it was. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> like that was not no longer a memory that I had. I'm really glad you brought that up. Yeah. Uh, that no. was fun. No, that was <laughs> the, and now that, yeah, that's that's the first one that I, I remember. I don't know if you you know, might have had some hand drawn T shirts that you made as a kid in grade school. No, or right. something, no but, that uh, was the first that was the first parody shirt. That's where it all yeah. that's where part of it all began then, right? That's where it all started. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's your favorite uh Billy Madison line? Oh I mean, just like, man. You know, like could you pick one? I mean it's it's gotta be that Veronica Vaughn is one fine piece of ish. I know from experience. No, no, you don't. No, I do not. But you can about imagine, right? Well, that's it. That's my favorite. And then, yeah. I, then I usually follow that up with screaming at the top of my lungs, no yelling on the bus. Yes. Yes. Uh, Chris Farley. Gone but not forgotten. No. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Great. That, that was a good question. Yeah. I really like that. That was a good, good trip. That was a good trip down memory lane for me to experience third hand. I, yeah. I enjoyed that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I wish I would have had a copy of my senior O2 shirts like a couple of years ago, you know, as, as right. parents do, you know, my mom gave me a box full of crap and in there was like a, a senior O2 shirt. And I was like, Oh, well this is just going to go in the rag bin to, you know, clean the car sometime right, or whatever. Right. And, you know, and it, I mean, it didn't fit anymore, but, um, but then, yeah, no. Then about 20, 25 years removed, you're kind of like, I wouldn't yeah. mind having that. Dang it. That would have been the, I, I, I could have pulled it up on the podcast and taken a picture of it and all this. No, nope. isn't not that, a missed opportunity. Isn't that wild? You were a senior 22 years ago. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, Thanks for bringing that up. Like, um, like you're closer but, when you were a senior, you're closer to being not born than you are now to being a senior. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yep. I am uh, closer to death than I, than I, than I was to life, I guess. So. Uh, well, we're glad nope. we caught Tron tonight and not bizarro Tron. Yes. Yeah. That, that, that could have, and could have gone off the handle there. You just got to mark off another on your Hall of Fame card here, I think, I, then, didn't you? I did. I did. And then I uh, did. this summer when you come to the Lift Hard, Leave Easy Classic and come to the gym, you mark off a few more. Yep. That's the plan. Excellent. Well, uh, we appreciate it, Tron. Great call. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, right. Tron. We'll see you later. All righty. Later. Ah, uh, yes. I did completely forget about that. Uh, the old senior shirts. Yeah. Um, I think Ben tried to call me back, but must, maybe that was a butt dial. He's trying to get on the podcast again. Yeah. Should we get a couple more? I yeah. got to re re up my phone. You got time for just a couple here. more. Yes. Yeah. Let's see. I'm just going to go in order. I guess it's the only fair way, right? That seems pretty unbiased. Um, let's see. Let's try this next one here. Big Mabel. Let's see if Big Mabel's still awake. I guess we won't want to start calling people too late. Well, anyways, he's in the we? Zoom, so. Oh, okay. Well, we know he's available then. Let's give him a try. Maybe he passed out watching us, though. Okay. 
You got the old senior O2 shirt. I wish I had that shirt still. Our sisters didn't think it was all that funny, if I remember correctly. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. Did you say you were yucking their yum at the time? <laughs> yeah, I think we were a little bit like, leave us alone. Hello, hello. Oh, is this Big Mabel? Is that who we're calling now? It is. I got to go mute my laptop. Yeah, you get that. You got that, uh, that echo. Double, double Tanner Tommy voice is coming in, don't you? I fell asleep on the gym floor, and I'm waiting for you guys. You thought we would never call, didn't you? Well, it's uh, it's getting pretty cold up up south here. <laughs> Where are you at, Big Mabel? I'm at uh, Calgary, Alberta. Oh. oh, our neighbors to the south. <laughs> the deep south. <laughs> yeah. The deep, deep south. It's good to get a little more uh, Canadian representation on here. I think you're only the second so far, and usually we always have a good number. Of We're Canadians trying to pump up here, Tanner's so. phone bill numbers, too, here. Yeah. Uh, Big well, Mabel. <laughs> yeah, Big Mabel, are you a fir- first time caller? First time caller, long time listener. Now, is Mabel your name? Or am I, uh, is that your your handle? That's my handle. I okay. think I'm I think I'm Matt number 69. That's right. It's a Matt. <laughs> yes. Okay. You're a Matt. But you, went, yeah. you go Mabel and then it, it, you don't just have to be another one of the Matts that way. Yeah. Yeah. If I have to, I'll be, I'll be Matt number 69. Okay. Well, that's a good Matt to be. <laughs> if it's a nice one, actually, if you, you got to pick one, that <laughs> one's nice. Uh Big big Matt six nine. Did you have a question for us tonight? I did. I uh, the big drop coming. Is it going to be a bigger, badder, beefier drink spotter to hold all those and rival the all the heavy mugs that I keep seeing? Mm, I would start off by saying we can't give away too many details on this upcoming big drop, other than it is going to be big. It's going to be. Real big. Um, I don't want to give away. My, that's almost saying too much, to tell you the honest <laughs> truth. What you're saying is not a bad idea, though. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Uh, there's that probably is a gaping hole in the market for something something like what you're talking about. But I don't. We can't give away too many details on the drop. But uh, we're playing this one pretty, pretty close to the chest. You might say. <laughs> I'm, I'm imagining something where you where you go where you make something just like the heavy mugs but make it like 55 pounds. It's drink spotter heavy. <laughs> yeah. If the mugs weigh, uh, if the mugs weigh 20 pounds, this drink spotter is going to weigh like, it's going to actually be made of like three, four, five actually, pounds. Actually, yeah. here we go. Um, this is what it is. I, I didn't want to spill the beans, but it's a collab with the strength co. It's a, it's a 45 pound coaster. Um, you can set anything on it. It's, it looks remarkably just like a 45 pound plate. Yeah. It's the heavy coaster. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna start saving up. It's gonna be like two thousand dollars. Grant should put that. Should have done that. that should have been his April, April Fool's, Fool's post. The heavy coaster. Yes, that it, what is a just great flip idea. Flip the plate upside then, down. Yeah, and just that should have been the April Fool's joke, but also listed it on his website for legit for sale, and some people would have bought it. He could have, and just charged. He could have charged. Yeah, like he said, he could oh, have five hundred dollars for it. Oh yeah, yeah. This is a great brainstorming session oh, for Grant man. on here. When will Thanks inspiration strike? Should yeah, we could all just text him right now. Oh, heavy coaster, big heavy coaster. Um, awesome. We appreciate the call. Uh, don't forget to mark off number eleven off of your uh, Hall of Fame card. I'm gonna go upstairs and do it right now. Excellent. <laughs> and uh, you stay safe down there, will you? Thank you. Uh, Have a good night. All right, you too. See ya. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Stay safe down there. Oh, I love it every time. <laughs> oh, it's dumb, isn't it? <laughs> All right, let's call Big Joe. Hey, I'm just feeling Joe. bad about the people we're not going to get on here, you know? Mm-hmm. We'll just have to wait when we do this again in a couple of years. Joe is not answering.
Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Oops. <laughs> Jody Shaler. <laughs> it's still going. <laughs> uh, uh, All right. Joe, you went to bed too damn early. Well, Next, now, we're going to try. Now, you know what? He has kind of a loophole situation he's in right now because his voice did just appear on the podcast. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, dang. <laughs> I don't know if a pre-recording counts, though. Ah, true. Okay. Okay. I don't know if that it's, counts. It's in our, in our thick rule book our, that no one has seen yeah. besides us. Hello? Big Colton, is that you? Yes. Oh, you we're bringing it back to eastern, southeast South Dakota? Yeah. We missed it. We missed We need a little more crew falls in our lives. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Big Colton, how's it going down there? Oh, pretty good. You know, um, I, I haven't ran into you much lately, Colton. I'm kind of feeling like I'm missing out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where are you yeah, been? I ran into Grayson the other day. Did you? At the gym. At the, yeah, you got, the gym. Were you guys getting yeah. a great life in, great life lift in, in together? Yeah, uh, he was just leaving when I got there. Oh, mm, it really warmed, is a great life, isn't it? He warmed it up for you. It really is. Yeah. Uh, did you have a question for us tonight, Big Colton? I did. So my question was, uh, what is your Mount Rushmore of fast food side dishes? Oh, Tommy. Okay. Well, yeah, I gotta do a little thinking now. Um, I mean, okay. Potato lays. Right. Yeah. Cause you, you don't want us yeah, to just say fries. Like you'd want us to say yeah. McDonald's fries. If we're going to say right. fries, right? Yeah. Okay, it's we got potato we got to on the Mount Rushmore. Fries. Right. Uh Olay the day. Um oh, there's just so many options racing through my mind right now. I I'll say this, I'm not a huge sides guy. It's part of why I like uh like if I go to Arby's, I get two sandwiches. Yeah, Tanner, or if I go to Wendy's, I get two I'm a two sandwich. As someone guy. that's been on a lot of trips with Tanner, yeah. I've only seen Tanner get sides a couple of times in my life. Tanner's a double yeah. entree kind of guy. Yeah, I'm a double entree guy. I'm uh sides uh belong on the side. All so far on the side <laughs> they fell into the garbage. Uh assuming they don't, I'll rattle mine off quicker because I'm not as much of a sides guy, so it's not is imperative to me. I go. We'll go. Potato Olays from Taco John's, curly fries from Arby's, uh, chili from Wendy's, mm. and for a fourth one, what do I want to do? I ta- uh, as a Western Northeast South Dakota uh, ode, I'll go Italian fries from That's a Pizza. Wow. Okay. That's that my is Mount a, Rushmore. That's a, that, that is one? a deep cut on that one. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Italian fries are the bomb, though. From uh, that's pizza. Yeah, my Better wife, pizza, my wife sometimes. loves those things too. I don't, uh, yeah. I don't order those often, but she is all about those yeah. when we go there. Yeah, okay for me. God, I, this is a hard one. I think, I think just because it is a cult classic, I think I would have to go with potato lays. Uh, if we're going off the fresh newness right now, because I still do hit Jersey Mike's once or twice a month, they have some spicy dill kettle chips there and those spicy dill kettle chips are damn good as far as chips go uh, i i don't know why but those things do it for me so i might put those up there just they probably have a recency bias to them but i think i would give them that then mm, this is where it gets tricky pardon me I'm, I'm really having this internal debate with myself because I kind of want to say McDonald's fries because their fries are pretty damn good. But it just seems like that's kind of too vanilla of an answer to go with. So that's why I have a hard time going that one. But I do feel like I'm not thinking of enough fast food places. I, like, Oh, eh, Freddy's fries are pretty good. Colton, you ever have those? Yeah, Freddy's fries are good. Freddy's fries are... Cheese string ones. Yeah, I do like... Uh, so maybe I'd give them a slight edge over that. <clears throat> but I got to be missing some fast food places. There got to be something really good on a fast food menu side that I'm not thinking of right now. I mean, you could what sort of make the uh, argument. Col- Culver's cheese well, curds. Well, I was actually going to say, could you make the argument that at Dairy Queen, a uh, blizzard, could that be considered a side? 
you know, technically you can order it yeah. as a side with some Normally of your meals. Normally I would say no, but in the case of Dairy Queen, it's kind of a special scenario there on the Blizzard. Right, right. I mean, if that was allowed, that would for sure Colton, be on the list for That me. would be a Colton call on yeah. this question, I think. I would say you have your druthers. Oh, <laughs> that's a good I do feel like I might be, you know, kind of uh, almost riding the line there. But if you're going to say it's allowed, then I would for sure say that that is, that is an ultimate side item is to get a, a, da- a Blizzard at Dairy Queen. Great. Those are good Mount Rushmore's. Any any ones that you would add that we you feel like we egregiously left out? Uh maybe some cheese curds from like Culver's. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Nice, actually I want to put those in. I'm gonna put cheese curds in in favor of uh cur- I'm gonna take Arby's curly fries out and put cheese curds in from Culver's. Good choice. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. And other than that, yeah. Just yeah, yeah. it's good, That's uh, good one. Okay. Uh, great question. So you're signed up for the Lift Hard Leave Easy Classic Strongman event, right? Yep. We I don't know if you heard earlier, but one of the special implements showed up. So pretty excited. <laughs> yeah, I stuff. did. And yeah. Yeah. Have any guesses of what it might be? I don't. Okay. Good. <laughs> don't you don't ever your guess to yourself. <laughs> damn it. Uh, uh, great call. Great question. Uh, you stay safe down there, Colton. Will do. All right, see you <laughs> uh, Should we uh, try Big Jakey? Yes. This is Big Jakey. Jakey. My cell phone company's probably like. <laughs> He's Sweet. clearly been hacked. <laughs> yeah. What are all these calls? I had one wrong number there. Not doing this probably in the most efficient Your way. Your call has been forwarded. Well, that's a very exotic sounding. Uh, yeah. Let me just make sure I had that one right. Let's see. Before I give up on him. Yep. That was right. So, Big Jakey, you missed it. We're going to move down the list. All right. We got one more corner of South Dakota to get to. Here it is. See if he's still awake. Uh, this favors him, right? It's an hour earlier in the West River side. Mm, yes. Who'd you say? Okay. Big Chris. Oh. Mr. Uh, former member of Judd Who's. Mm-hmm. We'll give uh, Big Chris a try. We haven't hit the southwest corner really very hard, so. Surprise how Zoom does not want me to hear that ringing. This is crazy. Mm-hmm. We'll try one more person here. All right. Maybe it's getting too late for people. See if someone can bring it on home for us. Yep. This is, I'm not sure who this Your is. Your call has been forwarded to voicemail. <laughs> Nor the will person we ever know. <laughs> all right. We're going to try one more. I can't just end on all missed no. calls here. We're going next to, Um. let's see. Who is next? Okay. Try Chad next. Chad is next on the list. Let me get this number down. Um, maybe we should do an ad quick. Okay, actually. here I'll do. I'll read an ad. Do an like, ad, and I'll write you're down working a through that numbers. there. Yeah. This episode is also brought to you by Swisslink. Since 1995, Swisslink has been importing military issue goods to the United States into the hands of those yearning for qual- uh, quality gear at uncompromised prices. Swisslink.com carries everything you'd imagine from British tactical vests to Italian Navy deck shoes and everything in between. Swisslink is also home to the authentic Wavian fuel cans. They're from the same factory that's been making the so-called Jerry cans for the NATO forces since the 40s. They're made from 0.9 millimeter of cold rolled steel. Wavians are the highest quality gas cans on the market. Big Mo over at Swisslink has since decided that a high quality water can was needed as well. So Swisslink developed a stainless steel water can to match. It fits all your wavy and jerry can holders and is made from food grade 304 stainless steel so you can trust it to carry your drinking water. This is another addition to Swisslink's exceptional collection and their dedication to quality customer service. Enjoy a 15% discount at Swisslink.com by entering code MASS at checkout. That's M-A-S-S 
at SwissLink.com. Save you 15% on your next purchase. Thank you, SwissLink. Thank you, SwissLink. Okay. Got a few more to try. Got to end on a high note. Did you say think, you're right? locked and loaded? Yeah, we're locked and loaded with some options right here. First one we're going to try is Big Chad. Hopefully not a hanging Chad. <laughs> like ballot thing. Real, real early 2000s, 2000s ballot yeah. guy. Tango Charlie Apparel. This is Charlie speaking. Oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> We've been pumped. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wouldn't that have been funny if someone wrote down that like their number and, yeah, and they that. actually had uh, somehow real yeah. support that answered <laughs> yeah they don't have real support uh big chat is that you hey, this is me what's up guys you're live on the massonomics podcast how's it going i'm good hang on one second uh, where where are you calling from sorry i uh, uh, i'd have my coffee you can talk to me now Oh, you didn't have your nobody. <laughs> nobody better talk to Chad until he ha- he's had his morning coffee. <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. Where where are you calling from? Well, currently I'm calling from. I guess it would be Western South Central Minnesota. I'm in the city. Oh, oh, oh okay. Um, but I am from North Central East Alabama. So, oh, right. So, what are you doing up in the cities then? Uh, up here for work. Okay. Geez, well, you're in our neck yeah. of the woods. Yeah, you're almost here. Yeah, yeah, basically. I'll Hop, be there skip, in and a jump. Can you feel the massonomics yeah. in the air from there? I do, I do. You know, I wore a massonomics shirt to the gym tonight. Nobody said anything. Well, what the so hell? Lame. What gym? Uh, oh, it was um, Los Angeles Fitness. Okay. Um, so. so are you are you uh, in the Lift Hard Live Easy Classic this summer? I am. I excellent, am. excellent. Yeah. Love to hear that. Uh, you'll check that box off and yep. now I got another one I can check off. Yep. So. Checking them off one at a time. Did you have a question for us tonight? Big Chad? I did. So I, I wrote this in a, a while back and fell asleep. So luckily I didn't fall asleep tonight, but if you guys had a choice, if you had to, would you rather fight one huck, huck fin size duck or a hundred duck size huck fins? <laughs> I would be really afraid of 100 <laughs> duck sized Dude, that's I would what not I thought too. That, in sounds, the same room as that. <laughs> that sounds terrifying. Yeah, that sounds. <laughs> Could you just imagine? Is there anything that's better on Huck Finn? 100 of those of any size would be like. Uh, just the amount of screaming that would be taking place <laughs> would be enough to rupture your eardrums. <laughs> uh, that would be fu- Also, though, uh, a 200. 30 pound duck would be nothing to mess with either. <laughs> that wouldn't be, but um, I can keep my eye on a 230 pound duck a little better than a hundred huck fins running around. And a huck fin also has no fear. So even him, even small versions of them, a hundred of them, they would just be like flying from the top rope at you. And like, uh, <laughs> just doing crazy stuff. I would go with the, the duck, the one big duck. I think. I actually think that that is the right answer. I don't even. I don't even think there is yeah. room for debate yeah. there. I believe that is right. the correct option. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that would be one one big duck. But you're right. You got to fight it one time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the answer. Okay. Uh that's yeah. that's a uh, that's a great question though. Yeah, you know, just deeply enlightened. It's philosophical in nature. So yeah. Yes. No, I we want to see. We appreciate that one. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, you make sure to stay safe over there in Minneapolis while you're there. Uh, I'm trying. You know, we're not used to this white crap that falls out of the sky. Ah, uh, preaching you know. to the choir. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll see you in July, though, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. It's we promise it probably won't snow then. Let's hope. Let's cross our fingers. That should be the one month this year we don't get snow, actually. <laughs> I know. Well. With 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 everything going on, yeah, with everything you going just on, never know. Actually, you got a lot of good little massonomics references in on your call. You made great use of your four minutes, <laughs> trying to shoehorn as much as I can. <laughs> yeah, well, well done. I give it a three and a half to four out of five. So that's I'll, I'll take that. Awesome. I'll take all, that. All right, thanks, Big Chad. Thanks, guys. <laughs> thanks, Chad. Tommy, do we have time for one more, or what do you think? Uh, that's fine with me. All right, let's do another one. I've got a few more on the list. I don't know that we'll get to all of them, though. It's, I guess I'll just keep saying that all night long. Try Big Lou. Just 
Is Big Mo in the chat still? Uh, yes, yes, he is. Oh, yeah. Is this who I think it is? Big Lou, is that you, you old son of a gun? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> What's happening? Oh, not too much. Just uh, winding down a lovely Tuesday night from playing some sand volleyball. Sand Jeez, volleyball? Sand volleyball already down south there? Oh, yeah. We got a spring league that we started early on. And, uh, yeah, long story short, it was a... Uh, it was a little chilly there today. Sand volleyball, more like snow volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> Am I we've right? Been, uh, we've been lucky to have been avoiding snow recently here in the Midwest, or at least if we, or at least in the southern Midwest. But the southern Midwest. Yeah, if we've gotten it, it's been pretty short lived and uh, it doesn't last too long, thankfully. Yeah. Um, what's happening? What's new? Oh, not too much. We uh, missed you at the I can't tell you a new thing. I- yeah, no, yeah. Arnold. The, it wasn't quite the Arnold without Big Lou. You know, I was pretty upset about it, but, um, you know, I had some other things going on that, you know, I yep. you know, couldn't really pass up. I mean, I was sitting in the sun, so I couldn't be real upset about that. But more A more important question is what are your plans this Ju- upcoming July? Oh, you know what my plans are for that. All right. That's all that really yeah. matters, to be honest, to be really <laughs> honest about it. That's... Yeah, I keep, uh, I keep having the people ask me. He's like, "Oh, you're like, you're going to you're going to Western Northeast South Dakota in July, are you?" I'm like, "Well, yeah." Okay. I mean, I feel like after last year, that was a given. Just don't take that from us. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't take that from myself either. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, did you have a question for us tonight, Big Lou, on the podcast? Oh, oh I do. Uh, my my wonderful question is, what is the uh, over under of how many uh well no that wasn't my question the question was uh <laughs> overrated or underrated the amount of fireball shots that are going to be consumed at the uh lift hard live easy classic two it's an underrated amount for sure underrated yeah <laughs> underrated uh underrated I feel, like, I feel like that's the only answer that's acceptable at this it point is. they just got to keep but, pumping those things in you would you would like it so uh someone at uh the Arnold did come and bring me a fireball shooter. So it almost felt like you were there in spirit at one point in time. Was it Karen? No, no, it was, uh, Tommy, you would know who I'm talking about. She's, she buys Masonic shirts and she's, she's real. She's jacked and strong. She does the arm lifting competitions. Oh, uh, yeah. I can't think of her name. Her and her boyfriend both do arm lifting and they're both, both strong and they're both yep. good at it. And I cannot think of her yep, name. I know exactly you, who you're talking about. She's too. always at the and Arnold and yep, can't picture the um, name. Yeah. She's probably listening, and she'll be like, "Here's my name, you dumbass, yeah, you losers." But, uh, <laughs> um, I can picture, her and you know, we talk to her every year there. Uh-huh. But she, her, the her and her boyfriend gave me a fireball shooter, and it was just like Lou was there. Oh, you see, I'm, you know, my spirit just uh yeah. just continues to live on, whether I'm there or not. Yeah. We'll uh we'll keep the fireball on ice for July 20th, though. Perfect. I'll, I mean, uh, Alex and I are going to be coming, obviously, well packed, well prepared. So we'll yeah. uh, we'll be ready. Excellent. We'll be ready. By the way, also got to make sure and let you boys know. Uh, yep, I believe this is. Uh, if my projections are correct, I believe this is a uh, another achievement that I got tallied off on the list for me from a from a Hall of Fame list as well too. What are you at? I believe this puts me at uh, this puts me at thirteen. Okay, oh. so have we sent you your silly pint list yet, and added you to the uh, list? I haven't crossed everything off. I okay. was uh, planning on uh, making a. I was planning on to make a nice little video to kind okay. of tally everything. <laughs> that way, I have my proof for it. So well, that way you yeah. guys know I'm not just you know feeding you feeding you bullshit or anything. We'll we'll wait for the proof, and then once we get it, we'll add you to the list and uh, get your 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 first reward sent out. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. We're looking forward to it. Yeah, but uh been a little busy. I got the uh the little bit ghost clash coming up this week, so we're actually heading to Miami on Thursday. Ah, party in the city where the heat is on. Oh yeah. <laughs> There'll be and there will be some party. There'll be You're some kind of a Miami party. guy. <laughs> You're kind of a Miami guy, aren't you? You know, as many times as I've been there, I haven't actually like been out and about in Miami. I'm just usually yeah, just usually like at just, the meet. Yeah. Yeah. Usually at the meet. I went to the beach once, got a picture there, you know, as as usual and uh, <laughs> otherwise yeah just kind of hanging out with the crowd there have you done the ghost clash every year they've had it yes the first year was not a very good year that's that year i bombed out so that was a um, that was a real fun time it'll be there on the next meet day <laughs> it'll be there on meet day not sure which meet day but it'll be there <laughs> yeah, on one, one of the meet days <laughs> not sure if it'll be for me but for, it'll be there for someone on meet day exactly exactly okay. 
Uh, awesome. Well, we appreciate the question. Uh, we'll see you in July, and you stay safe down there in Miami. Will do. Will do, brothers. All right. See you, big Thanks, Lou. Lou. We'll see you. Should have asked him if he still had the Malibu. Oh, I, I like to think that he always has the Malibu, that it's just a part I of you. I think so, doesn't he, right? Yep. I, he couldn't get rid of that, could he? It's too valuable. It's it's like priceless. Yeah. They can't really give you a price that is actually yeah. makes sense. Right, right. Uh, Lou's in Omaha, right? Mm-hmm. There's another Omaha call to Big Matt if he, if he answers, if he's still awake. Hold Jake. on, got everything up on the Zoom call. Oh, uh, oh okay. good. Wasn't okay, Jake in Omaha, on. too? Uh, yep. So is this our third Omaha call tonight? Yep, you got... Uh, Jake from State Farm, yep. and me. Oh, we're wow. getting heavy Omaha, rival in the western, yeah, northeast, South Dakota. Together. Yeah. Um. So yeah, you're uh big Matt is former Massonomics gym member, but a transplant now down to Omaha. So you get uh you must get into the same gym as Lou every once in a while, don't you? Yeah, pretty regularly. Just about every Monday. We should have just called you guys on. You could have got together and we could have just <laughs> saved the time and called this some one call. Conference call. <laughs> we could have. We could have. Yeah. Uh, Big Matt, did you have a question for us here on the podcast? Yeah, not a not a super fun question, but I figured I'd ask. The first lift hard was easy was powerlifting, and then the yeah. second one adding uh, strongman. So does that mean the third one we're going to get a uh, Olympic lifting contest? Oh. Mm. I see. Uh, now that you mentioned that, Big Mo is on the list uh, to call here to, tonight. Yeah, too. Big, Big Mo would like that. I'm no doubt about that. Uh, that would be more of a stretch, wouldn't it, Tommy? That would be. That'd probably be because, particularly because of our lack of expertise in <laughs> right together. and just deeper connections and the number of people that do that as well would be the right. problem there. But I think that fun, that's the idea probably of adding more things, though. Yeah, I do like the idea of adding more things. I don't know if there's probably like I could see like. I mean, I actually, I don't want to get anyone on hope up because I don't really see this happening. But before that would happen, I could see like a Highland Games component prior to Olympic lifting or like, uh, mm, I don't know. I don't really see an exhibition. No, not cross bodybuilding show. (laughs) Yeah. Or like, uh, maybe like an arm wrestling. I don't see that happening either, but it could probably happen before Olympic weightlifting. Um, but I could, yeah, no. I don't think it'll happen, will it, Tommy? Probably not. Going to be real, no. <laughs> but never say never. I'll say that. <laughs> That's fair. Anything's always possible. Are you getting uh, back up here to Western Northeast South Dakota anytime soon to do a little do a little training? Possibly. I uh, talking to the girlfriend about it. We might be heading up there soon. All right. Who knows? You know where to find us. Yes, I do. All right. Thanks for the call, Big right. Matt. Uh, stay safe down there in Omaha. Thank you. All right. See you, Matt. See you, buddy. Yeah, I don't think the Olympic weightlifting is going to happen, is it, Tommy? Probably not. That would be a Too stretch. much of a stretch for us, yeah. Let's try Big Mo as long as we're talking it. Go back up north on the interstate here. Yeah. Well, we did hit Brookings one. We're doubling up on Brookings here, I guess, aren't we? City morgue, you stab them, we'll slab them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Big Mo, is that you, you old son of a gun? It is. It is. How we doing? Pretty good. How's it going there? Pretty good. Pretty uh, good. I'm a little concerned because I never wanted to be part of a group that, or a club that would actually admit me. <laughs> and here you are. <laughs> and here I am. We established with Tron, we actually do have quite low standards. So I don't know what that's that says. Good. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. I can at least uh, reach that level. Yeah. Um, so, second caller from Brookings tonight. Uh, we're, I, I don't know if you heard our last call, but they're actually, Big Matt was actually asking about if we'd ever do an Olympic lifting event at, uh, or an Olympic weightlifting event at uh, the Lift Hard Live Easy Classic. I, I, I did hear. guess you'd be I interested did. in that. I would, I would love that, but I, I understand where you guys are coming from with your, with your comments. That was actually something I thought about asking, um, and I know – uh, big Jake, who's just crossed railroad tracks here from me, he's on the he's on the wrong side of the tracks. Uh, here yeah. in Brookings. He had mentioned doing a strongman, an Olympic meet, and a powerlifting meet uh, all in back to back weeks. 
last year um, as a uh, as a strength triathlon. So that sounds like a young I man's game. <laughs> oh yeah! It does. Oh yeah! Um, uh, did you have a question for us tonight, then? I do have a question, and a few gone back and forth on, um, but uh, there's no wrong I'm gonna, questions. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little shout out to uh, to the uh, sister podcast, Unpaid and Underrated. And uh, Never heard a nod to not <laughs> nod to Crew Falls, Team Avera or Team Sanford. Oh, Tommy, you have deep allegiances here. I I have uh, you know I, I you could say I have a conflict of interest here, so I probably have to see my way out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, consider considering what I had done uh, two weeks ago, I've got a I've got a, a conflict of interest yeah. as well. So, How are you uh, doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I, uh, yeah. I love I'm, that uh, uh, you were able to take the opportunity to get a crew photograph with someone. Uh, that oh was yeah, a, that was a, a very good part of it. Also, yeah, I, you, you were I, able to get on supporting our supporting members because of it. I don't know if you heard that from this last week too. I did. I did hear that. I appreciate that, and it was really a big sh- shout out to. Uh, Paul Foss, I appreciate them taking care of me, and yeah, it was all good. So, uh, yeah, it was fun. It was a it was a perfect opportunity, and my wife was uh, she she was like, "You're posting that on social media." I'm like, "Yeah, what's what what what, what better way to make fun of it than you know to to, to put it out there?" And it gets me closer to uh, to you know, on my punch card, and you know, she's she calls it my cult, but. Uh, <laughs> Well, you she's know, not I'm like okay way off that. base. Yeah. <laughs> she's not wrong. She's not wrong. <laughs> uh, she's not way off base on that one. I don't think is she. No, no, we in the ballpark. Yeah. Um. So what? Uh, what did did you have a? Did you decide on a question for us then? Oh, oh no! Wait, it was the. Oh, it, it was, was the, just Tommy doesn't get to answer. He had to abstain from that one then. Yeah. He has to abstain. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't answer. I guess we have the question. We just have no answer. So it relies Correct. on me. That's a tough one. I don't particularly love either of them based on the, the amount that they charge me for their services. Uh, I suppose yep. um, our babies have all been delivered through a Vera, so I will go with them for that reason. That is will be my justification. I'd hate okay. to choose. I'd hate to split. I don't want to split amongst any crew. I appreciate all the <laughs> all the crew that work at both, but uh, that's why. Well, I, but we, assuming I have to make a choice, that's it is funny it. how many crew and crew adjacent people we do have line. involved in the healthcare system in Sioux Falls. Right, <laughs> right. There is a lot. Yeah, it. Uh, I, I thought it'd be interesting there, and you know, I it's. Uh, yeah, can't ride the line, and uh, you know, I just it was kind of a cool cool thing for me to have a procedure like that and to know uh from the other podcast that uh, that's where paul worked and yeah. uh, and that he was able to to help me out so it was yeah, that is cool. kind of the cool crew part of helping the, crew yeah the yep. un, unpaid and underrated podcast uh of the people we've called tonight there's probably been like 15 people that have been interviewed on there uh, so if you think yep. that you enjoyed listening to anyone that called in here, you can probably find out more about just about all of them by listening to that. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Good stuff. Awesome. Well, I appreciate uh, it. I didn't, you, I didn't know the world existed this late. Uh, <laughs> it only does on podcast <laughs> night. Uh, and when so. your kids are up screaming, which could be any moment yeah. now. So. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that existed anywhere, any, <laughs> anymore either. I've got my youngest is uh, 18. So <laughs> yeah, maybe your gra- grandkids eventually, but then you don't have to do any of the bad stuff. You just do the fun stuff. That's right. Hopefully yeah. not too soon with that. Yeah. <laughs> don't need that yet. <laughs> uh, that'll give you even more gray hairs. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, we appreciate it. Big Mo, um, I appreciate it. Stay safe down there in Brookings. Sounds good. I'll uh, can't hold anything back now. I don't have uh, don't have much time to uh, progress back in and uh, get ready for the lift hard, live easy. Nope, you cannot hold back now. All right. Even a hospital, appreciate even a hospital visit won't let you hold back. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Unless they said to hold back, then I guess I would <laughs> actually listen to them, not us. But. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Thanks. the uh, 
45 pound bar I'm going to lift tomorrow is about all I'm doing right now. So okay. we'll, well, we'll, we'll be ready. Given we'll be the ready. circumstances, I don't, I'm not going to yeah. consider that holding back. It's kind of like a kind of sort of everything is a PR going forward now. Right. That's right. Recovery That's right. PR. That's the best part. Recovery PR. Yeah. Awesome. Stuff. All, all right. right. Well, we'll see you in July, Appreciate if not it. before that sometime. Sounds good. All right. All right. Thanks, Bell. Appreciate it. Bye. Do you want to try one last one, Tommy? If you think you have one in the hopper. All right, I think we got one last one, and then I think we at least tried once just about everyone. I could have probably missed someone, but so, several people have texted that we've missed saying, ah, oh, shit, I missed it. Yeah, but, that's their problem. Uh, oh, yep. you the voicemail of Eddie Woodard. Oh, no. Eddie. <laughs> Eddie. Well, Mr. Chance. He was just on. I know. I wonder if he, could, he must have just been like, oh, screw it. Um, I'll try him one more time. Oh, it rang this time. Oh. What's up, uh, Big Tanner, uh, Big Tommy? Mr. Best big Package Eddie. himself. <laughs> we thought you gave hey, up hey. on us. Yeah, I was like, maybe they're going to call. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Zoom on the phone. Go send straight to voicemail. Uh, big Eddie, how the heck are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. We're. Uh, I think you're going to be our last call tonight. So you're the cabo- you're wow. the caboose of the shindig. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, well then, I got a couple of questions. First uh, one: uh, Who the hell do you think you are, <laughs> and what gives you the right? <laughs> Excellent questions, though that there are no good answers to. <laughs> That's one of the quiz questions for those who claim to have listened to all the back back catalog. Actually, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we do need a quiz for everyone that that marks off yeah. and listen to all 400 ep- of the first episode the answers submit to us and we grade them yeah. we're the only one yeah. that knows how they performed <laughs> yeah so sweet uh let's see what else what other questions that i have because i know i always like once they start rolling i send you a bunch um eddie how many how many hall of fame marks are you at yeah I sent it to you. I'm at 14, but I haven't heard back from you. Oh, I don't know where'd you send. I because I was just like it just as we're I sent it talking. to you on uh, Instagram. Oh, and that was actually one of the questions I came up with while listening. But, oh, like, oh, we yeah. gotta get. Well, did you read the fine print, Eddie? It said you were excluded from the competition. You, you yeah, no lie. prior <laughs> bowl conspirators. Like, I upset these guys. I'm like, I'm pretty sure they would have told me. No, <laughs> I just just now I was just like as we were talking about. I'm like, wait a second. I don't think Eddie's on the list, but he has to be over 12. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've messaged you, and I'm like, I'm like, because I started working on videos for it, and then I got distracted by life. Oh, so oh, like, maybe oh, that's what you said. I thought, did we? Yeah. I thought maybe you said like, oh, wait, because I'm going to do a video or something like that. No, I didn't say wait. Okay, just, I'm just trying to justify my screw up at this point. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like every once in a while I check back. I'm like, huh? Huh? Okay. No, no, that was. <laughs> It gets to me when they get to me. <laughs> had we not had this conversation right here, right now, and like I literally just pulled it up as we started talking, I'm like, wait a yeah. second, Eddie has to be on there. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like got the list. I was like, oh, so man. what two are you missing? Four years, four years falls. Okay, oh. so it is literally just a matter of time for you at four years. When when yeah. will that be? Well, I became a supporting member right when the Discord started. So that's so that be would, not too far away. Would it then. be 2021? <laughs> like, would, it, would we got to wait till 2025 sometime to hit four years, do I you, suppose? Do you need or? a for sure answer, Eddie? I can get you a for sure answer if you need one. <laughs> I mean, we can find out that for sure answer. Because oh. I don't, I don't, you know, so, so I was wondering if I could like double up on some of them, you know, like three no, times du- Arnold, you know, <laughs> no, no doubling up, Eddie. How many, uh, how many crew members, you know, who has the most photos with crew members, you know, <laughs> August, <laughs> August kind of, of 25, right? Tommy, is that what you're seeing? Yeah. You joined August of 21. So yeah, yeah. 20, 2025 would put you at four years. Yep. I think there's going to be a lot of us that you be hitting that mark. Um, well, there's not a, well, they'll be hitting that four years, but not a lot of people hitting the 15 because mm-hmm. of it. I don't think yeah, that's true. That's you true. Know, like there'll be a lot of people checking off a box in 2025 because that's of that true. four year. But, uh, yeah. I think the, the 15 will still be fairly, fairly exclusive. Yeah. Nobody's there yet. 
Well, when you put me up on the list, feel free to list me as the mole. Well, when <laughs> when you get to 15, we'll be sure to also not give you credit for yeah. that, just like we didn't give you credit yeah. for the 12. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wouldn't expect anything less. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. What I know I had another question. Let me see if it's in there. Now, see, it doesn't show me the questions I submit to you. That's always frustrating. Yeah, um, no, we just throw those right in the shredder. That's why. It doesn't... <laughs> yeah, we file yours in a very important bin called oh, the yeah. trash. Yeah. <laughs> right to the incinerator, just like in Dr. Evil's lab. Um, uh, you, did, you asked, do you have a board stretcher that I can borrow next Columbus, <laughs> next oh, March yeah. in Columbus? Ooh, I remember another one. What is, uh, what is Big Tommy's favorite electrolyte snack and why is it sucker punch pickles <laughs> you know what i was gonna say eddie you know i was gonna ask you when, when you said you had to go i was gonna say eddie you've been sucker punched <laughs> oh, i don't my. know if nobody would get this would they no uh, like is there any explanation needed uh, i don't know <laughs> there was a booth yeah. at the arnold <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so much fun. Here, here's was, a good, oh, go ahead if you got anything. Else I was on that. really hoping that that uh, that jug was still gonna be there. <laughs> Ta- as we were uh, as we were driving, I think I told you this, Eddie, when I talked to you on the phone yeah. shortly after. But like, as we were down the road a little bit, I think it's when Tommy filled me in that you were going to like hide one of the gallon jugs <laughs> like in one of our totes somewhere yeah. and like it wouldn't be until i got home <laughs> i'm unpacking stuff and then i'm like damn it why is there a gallon jug of this pickle juice in here <laughs> like we just drug i just drug this in the trailer out of the trailer into my house and oh my god that would have been pretty funny that would have been amazing <laughs> <laughs> uh you did have a good question for tommy in here though actually um you said, does Tommy oh. have a, a garage gym fridge? Yes. Do you mm, have like a gym that. fridge? I do not yeah. have a gym fridge. Um, that's, that was one of the things that, like, didn't get mentioned in the the list of equipment. And I'm like, dude, you got to have, like, a gym fridge. Yeah, I could Especially see how that'd be. To me, that would be, uh, well, t- uh, there's a couple ways you go with it. You know, a lot of yeah. people just have an f- extra fridge in the garage where they keep some items. Well, yeah. So that's one option. But then there's always the option of you get the really cool decorative fridges that have like a wrap or something on them. And that would look pretty sweet too. Maybe that'd be one of those things where, um, and I was kind of talking about Tanner with this offline. It might be a topic in future weeks is now that I have a gym, paying attention to marketplace is something that I'm doing for the first time in my life. So I could see like if a cool fridge popped up for a decent deal, it might be like, yeah, I got to get that as a little centerpiece in the gym. So yeah, maybe in the future, that'd be something. And, you know, I'm like, I've got an old beater mini fridge that I just use mm-hmm. between keeping waters and, you know, for me, the energy drinks, caffeine. And then uh, I have a bunch of those protein shakes in there, too, the the Fairlife one. So mm. it's always nice to have. And a couple know, gallons just, of Sucker Punch. <laughs> <laughs> just in case. In you case. know, if we get... We get you one of those gallons of the sucker punch, and then get you one of those like hand pumps, like a giant ketchup container. <laughs> and you, that way you just got <laughs> and, and I have my own little like sucker punch shot cups where I can just pump it into and drink that's it what in. I want to yeah. smell while yeah. I'm lifting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just constantly spilling it everywhere. Yeah, my kids would be out there in a second having that whole jug emptied on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> you can make some A twenty or your uh, or your vaso blitz, and then just hit it with yeah. a couple of that juice. Yeah. <laughs> People have asked about a uh, gym fridge in Massonomics gym before. Yeah, be, it's a good idea in theory, uh, but I would never only. do it because people will not no. keep it uh, clean or sanitary, no, and I'm, I'm not, not going to clean it every day that I go. So, work. No, it's terrible. Yeah, it wouldn't work. Uh, yeah, I, I don't blame you on that one. No, it'd be um, cool. It'd be ni- It's a nice thought, but it wouldn't work. Yeah, yeah um, but it works at home. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Any other question on there I had? No, I think that was the good one. I think that yeah. was it. And then, uh, it. because I kind of yeah, heard you got some bands as well. Me? You got some bands. Yep, yep. ordered Tom some bands. Ever- Actually, it was funny. I went on to Rogue this weekend to go order bands. And, of course, like yeah. the bottom, like the red through the green were all sold out. And I'm like, really? These things are all sold out? So I signed up for in-stock notifications. And then they came in stock last night. So I ordered, uh, mm. I ordered uh, up okay. to 
with the green or the black one? I can't remember. I ordered like three or four. There's a lot you can do. And then Spud Inc.'s always, they've got so many things. I mean, you guys know about it. They have so many things that are perfect for the home gym. Mm -hmm. Especially like if you're tired of your, I don't know, I guess you're not getting a cable stack, are you, for lap pull downs? Uh, You're doing the body. Yet, but I had someone reaching out to me today giving me some. Some so, yeah, yeah, so that's, tips so. and tricks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm not, you know, that's one of my goals for the years: back to body weight pull ups and dips. And so I'm taking full advantage of those bands and yep. my my crappy lap pull down until I get back up to the body weight. Um, yeah, and you don't have you don't have any any dumbbells of mine or anything anymore. I don't think. <laughs> hey, you, you nope, got, it's all gone. No, nope, I just got the extra eights. Oh yeah, extra eights. There you go. And uh, my wife seems to. Not want me to sell them, so I'm you like, well, I'll, I'll just you can't keep them afford around. not to keep them. Yeah, I'm, and it's funny because since I I've, I've searched for those York dumbbells so many times, that's what Facebook Marketplace just auto populates for me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can't <laughs> not take see it over. <laughs> yeah. So many things, and it's always it's always great when there's like six different styles, and they don't even mention the Yorks, and I'm like, I wonder if they know mm, what's in the, like, they've got ah, here, the collection. Yeah. I'm gonna spend three hundred dollars on all these hex dumbbells just to get one set of yours. Yeah, yeah. The tax is probably worth it. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that was a good question, Eddie. We won't be seeing you this summer, but uh, I'm sure yeah. we'll see you next year at the Arnold, right? Uh, I don't see why not. I don't. Th- I don't think <laughs> yeah. you can. I don't think it's an option for you to not go yeah. to Arnold anymore. No. You're no. kind of well, a Arnold and- staple. Yeah, and by missing this year, it means that I'm pretty much guaranteed for next year out there in July. Yep, yep. So, we'll keep a spot warm for you. Good, good. Or you, cold. It'll you've got warm. a title to come back that you're uh, going to vacate, but then you got to come back to try and defend in 2025. Reclaim it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I'll just be in a lower low cut, lower weight class. Best best package award uh, 2025. I can picture it already. Leaner and meaner. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, thanks for calling. I appreciate it. Good questions, Big Eddie. Uh, you stay safe over there, will you? Will do. I'll stay safe down here. All right, <laughs> yeah. I'll stay safe down there. Stay well, safe. You stay safe up there. All right, we'll stay safe. <laughs> thanks, Eddie. All right, no more calls. Too many calls. Well, then we're, we're due for, old for this shit. We're due for something here. Cool beans. Cool, cool beans. Beans. Cool beans. A round of safe cool beans for everyone involved. Thank you, everyone, tonight who stayed safe. Thank you, everyone, <laughs> tonight for uh, checking out JuggernautAI.app. I was kind of thinking, uh, I was thinking of a person. Who would be perfect for Juggernaut AI? Who would be the perfect person to try it? I was thinking someone. Uh, like a maybe fictitious you, person or a person we know? Well, I'm just building a person in my head. Like a persona you know, here. Yeah, I'm, I'm building to build a, an ideal a client. Virtu- right, okay. an ideal client. I, I got an ideal uh, client in mind. Yeah, uh, yeah. My ideal client is, all right. You've been powerlifting, maybe not even powerlifting. You've been lifting a while, but you're ready to start getting serious. And when I say a while, like you've put in some time under the bar, you know, you got some yeah. years of experience. You've you know what def- a squat and a bench and a deadlift. Yeah, is. you've hit some you PRs, know. you've hit some plateaus, you've also got back to PRs, but now progress is stalling a little bit, and you've tried some various phases, versions of programming and progressions and rep schemes, but you're looking for something that you're looking to take you to the next level. And I think that's where Tanner has something for you. Yeah, that's where you check out juggernautai.app. Um, get signed up there. Use discount code Massonomics. It saves you 10% for the lifetime of that membership. And one success story before I forget it. I just just remembered this. Larry Legend. Oh, God. He's done, done 20-some powerlifting meets in his life. He's been powerlifting training nonstop for... Uh, I don't know, 20 years. Yeah, I mean, his his first meet was probably 15 years ago. Yeah, for 15 years ago. Uh, he got on Juggernaut, I would say, about a year ago. And he just this week, and Larry would be the first to tell you, Juggernaut AI has been a huge part of helping him get here. At 47 years old, with his, with his training history that he's had, with the in part with the help of Juggernaut AI, controlling his programming he has now hit a pr deadlift of 600 pounds he's never deadlifted 600 pounds before least favorite lift he would tell you all day long hates the deadlift has kind of become one of his 
you know, it's it's become just as good as other other lifts on you know on par. And, and this is a guy that's been stuck really at helped him become well rounded. He's been stuck at five fifty to five sixty for I don't know basically ever years. since I've known Larry. Yeah. He can right. he can deadlift somewhere around five fifty five sixty yep. ever since I've known him. Yep. So for this guy that's been powerlifting that long to break through and all of a sudden hit six and the six hundred. It like slowed down in the middle a little bit, and then it yeah. shot up. And I'm just looking at that, it thinking yeah. it almost looks like a technique thing. It, it looks like you yeah. got you got a few things straightened out. You might have another 20 pounds in the tank there, yep. easy. And he did that hook grip. Uh, you know, is this a uh, really good, conventional, uh, really great PR just, lift? Yeah. And he would be the first. I'm not putting words in his mouth. I mean, he tells me all the time how important the using juggernaut has been for his training like how well it has actually worked and helped him mm-hmm. um with it all of his training he's Dude, i saw that pr too, and not 47 and just started lifting 47 and been dedicated to powerlifting for 20 years this is a guy that can has basically been able to bench around four plates for forever high threes forever yeah he's been able to squat in the high fives forever yeah, he's been deadlifting in the mid fives forever, and so for a guy like that to make he's progress. been going to the gym three to four <laughs> days, three to five days a week. Ever he has never not done that in twenty years. Mm-hmm. Like he has never missed the gym in that amount of time. Like so, it's not like he wasn't dedicated before. He was already at no, a ten out of ten no. on dedication. Larry's level. like the the yeah. gap between Larry's weakest and strongest is like ten pounds. <laughs> right. Um. So that's just a great success story. That could be you. You could be Larry Legend. You could be insert your name Legend if you ch- checked out <laughs> JuggernautAI.app. Discount code Massonomics. Save you 10%. Okay. We got the Q&A. It is two and a half hours into this episode. Mm-hmm. Are we just going to have to abandon all other topics? Or uh, probably. Because the, I could the one on the, you had mentioned before that basketball. Oh, maybe we should be, uh, what basketball, do we, dude. What do we give our each give our hottest takes on the basketball? And guys, we try not to NC get into State. Super deep? Let, come on, NC State all the way. That's that's all. UConn is destroying people, but NC State is the team to be right now. Yeah, dude. it's hard to root against the Cinderella. Oh. Uh, you know, the, what are they, 10 or 11 seed, whatever it is? Yeah, 11, I believe. And just the fact of how they got there, they basically had to win out to even yeah. show up. And then they win the ACC tournament. And then they basically beat those same teams again in the actual tournament. Dude, yeah. what a story. And uh, they've got to play Purdue first mm-hmm. matchup. Yeah, Purdue's going to be tough. That Edie at his Zach seven. E, yeah whatever uh frame and he's playing good um he's kind of i like well i always like a big guy so i mm-hmm. like watching i've enjoyed watching him play he's a true big man too he's, you know, a, he's a throwback he like old school big something? man yeah but he plays like he plays he is a uh low post mm-hmm. player true and true through and through so i like watching him play um uh, my note that i would make is still i said it last week the women's tournament is way it's, better. It's uh, what's played in their face. Okay, so you said they that. have the stars. I've watched more. They have the star power. Yes, I've watched more women's basketball in the past week than I have probably in my entire life. Yeah. And uh, the games that are good are great. The games that aren't so good get a little tougher. Yeah. Like the lows yeah. are a little lower. It's the stars. But it is really, the stars. Like, and it worked out. You know the people that run the TV oh. are just thinking, oh, praise God, this worked out in our favor is... We yep. had the best matchups in the world for the way this could have worked out. The biggest Last names night's clashy. matchups were awesome. You know, we got LSU and Iowa, the rematch. Mm-hmm. That did not disappoint. I mean, last night had to have been the biggest. I would love to see the numbers. It would have to be the most watched girls' night of basketball ever in the history of the world. Oh, easily. How could it and not then be? Uh, Juju Watkins is Dude, a stud, she too. Is she is so, so good. good. For a freshman, yeah. she is. I mean, actually, yeah. not even for, for anyone. She's so good. Right. And then the fact that she's a freshman, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, if you just like even get just marginally better in the next year or two, you're gonna just destroy everyone. Yep, she's awesome. Like if she actually Obviously sticks it through, I would I would assume she's just gonna break all the records Caitlin Clark set. And it's the Caitlin Clark records are insane because every night she breaks like three more records. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how is there any records left? You've already broken every record. But I think how is I there? think last night what wasn't it last night? Didn't Juju break the freshman scoring record? Did she? She had yeah. like base, it's like like eight nine hundred points in a season for yeah. a freshman, which is nuts. Um, my other couple notes is the WNBA has to figure out a way not to screw this up. 
because like See, they are getting this, star okay, power and I don't was, know how they can do it. This was my wife's question the last night. She goes, so why do you say this is all must watch TV and people are all excited about these? So are they excited for the WNBA? I'm like, mm. no. she goes, why not? And I'm like, cause it's the WNBA. She goes, but why aren't they excited? And I'm like, you know what? That's actually a good question. My first theory was that one, it's college sports, so people care a little bit more. And also the college part of it is, is just by default you have a built in audience because you have a tie to the college. No one Yeah, absolutely. No one has a tie to the Minnesota Lynx or the Phoenix right. Mercury or whatever the teams are. Like you don't have a tie to those like you do to ASU and you know, whatever college you went to. Yeah. So already yeah. they're fighting that. And then I I don't know. Like it's I just said like it's the perfect thing right now though, because they got these big personalities. And what I said is also going to be interesting, though, is that can these people hang on to this star power in the WNBA, or is it you've been banished well, to no WNBA man's land? The WNBA is a star killer, so that's why that's I don't know. Like, like they have yeah. to figure out the WNBA has to figure out a way not to extinguish the flame that is burning with. But Caitlin Clark, I, uh, Juju Watkins, I don't uh, know how Angel Reese. They have a they have uh, an uphill battle for them for sure. And it's just I don't like, know how it's a major business it, problem but, here. It's not just like a. Right. Basketball problem. This is an actual business no, problem to figure out here. Right. Is how and, do you get people I, to care about this? My guess is they it won't they won't care in like into the WNBA. It'll, like the WNBA kind of sucks. Uh women college basketball is awesome it's right now. It's sort of like WNBA comparable to a guy like who gets done at college and then goes and plays somewhere in Europe and you're like, "Well, right. yeah, he's playing at another level somewhere, but I don't know where that is or what's going on." Right. Right, that's that is kind of what it's like. Uh, I wish it wasn't like that. I don't because, know. Uh, I'm like, but oh, maybe if they could make this. It, maybe this is the things start the to two, change. Two year talent pool, though, that like people are just, like that people do care enough about their time in college that then they go the pro. They want to follow them. I mean, it definitely isn't hurting things. Do. Like this is playing no. into it, but. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. In a couple of years, when you say that, that Paige Beckers and Caitlin Clark and uh, assuming Angel uh, Reese, yeah, and, Angel Reese, and all of them go, yeah. you know, is that enough to keep people interested? That that'll be yeah. the that'll be the test. Well, and uh, Caitlin Clark got offered the five million dollars to play uh, uh, the big three, whatever ice cubes. Yeah. She should do that for five million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm like, do it. It's one year. You would think, like, yes. You, but also, aren't there? Aren't her nil deal? Well, but this place. She, the I think she's though. like three million yeah, nil but, deals. So but she'll still get. She'll still get whatever her advertising is. But uh, will she but though? She like, might, will are those uh, eyes? Might, do those eyes still care about her in the WNBA? That is a genuine question. Well, I I was gonna say she has a better chance of probably getting more eyes in this other league. I mean, it's not gonna be less eyes. Right. Like, it'll <laughs> yeah. be more interesting. It'll just be like, oh, like, people just want to see how it goes. I know. that. That's where I'm just actually from a business yeah. and marketing standpoint. What happens to these, and I, I'm using she this term might, very loosely here. at least here, for but, a while until Yeah, it, but what uh, happens to their social stock here, you know, where it's. Just made confetti go down. I know. <laughs> Sue has <laughs> confetti popping around because I'm doing rabbit ears for quotes. But, yeah. you know, what happens yeah. to their. Right you know to their engagement levels when they're in the w like are they actually in no man's land or can they still garner attention and eyes yeah it'll be interesting to see the other thing i would the other comment i'll make this is my opinion so i'm not saying my opinion is gospel but this is just i feel pretty strongly about this is people say this is a fictitious scenario but uh if caitlin clark went into the nba she could be uh she could you know she could light it up a little bit even in the nba against the men and I love watching Caitlin Clark and I think she's awesome. And she's like the most exciting women's basketball player ever to watch. And her shooting is absolutely insane. And she like burns people and roasts them and is sick. And I love watching it. And I want to see them win just because I like, I just want to keep watching her play. But if she played in the NBA, it would be an enormous embarrassment. Oh, like absolutely. She would not be able to get a shot off and, and that she could not yes. get a shot that shouldn't surprise anyone like she is if you know 5 11 yes. 150 pounds and the nba players are the most athletic men in the world are arguably like the mo most well not athletic the 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 some of the biggest physical freaks in yes. the world because a short nba player is six five mm -hmm. and uh uh can jump you know and touch a 14 foot uh, just, yeah, they can move in a way that no one else could imagine. Like, it, like she, she, and she has 
for women's college basketball, she has really good handles mm-hmm. and good, decent quickness. She would look so slow in the NBA, and I'm not saying that to discredit her. That's just a difference in yeah, it's uh, just men a, it's and a women. Different, it's a you totally know, it's a different game. It really is. She she would not though her her only hope would be to come off a screen and get a shot. But even then, at her her height, you know, even with her yeah, good release, it would be tough. Yeah, like crazy, the comparison yeah. is Steph Curry, but Steph Curry is. Is he like six three or two, six three four? inches taller? Yeah, he's like six six two, six three. And his handles are you don't can't even understand mm-hmm. like how you know, mm-hmm. like how good his handles are. Like it's other a, di- a different yeah. level. Yes. And um, you know, it's just and then even just his jump shot, he elevates to a different mm-hmm. you know, it's just the, the way that the two sports are played between the men and women, there's an elevation factor that just is significantly different between the, the two. And, yeah, it, uh, I would th- and she would never be able to play defense. She would be the biggest no, defensive that, that liability in the, the NBA. Yes, that'd be She's huge. She's 5'11", 150 pounds mm-hmm. against the smallest guy. And then, like, Steph Curry can still dunk the basketball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, I mean, you know, I'm just... Yes. Uh, my, my point there being like that is not a fair well, uh it always reminds me of the argument when people are like oh take the best college football team and have them play the worst and team in the pros and it's like the... no you would lose you know right. why because the best college football team has a few guys that go pro and you know what the worst f- pro team has all pros on it <laughs> like yeah it's it's only pros on the yes. best college fo- are yeah. the best pro it's team like no alabama isn't gonna beat uh yep i don't know who's the worst team in the nfl this year i don't even I, remember but uh, was it the Jaguars or whoever yeah. the hell it was? And someone could have a different opinion than me on Caitlin Clark, and that's perfectly okay. But I'm I feel pretty. Yeah. I I have strong the, yes, and strong I, it's not the point them. of them. Like they have the WNBA, like that's the thing, is right? Like they have their league, right, so it's exactly. like okay, we don't need to yeah. do this weird fantasy. It's fun. It's a fun conversation, maybe to have though. Yeah. Like uh, could then uh, the what I would say is someone like Juju Watkins would have more potential because she's just bigger and more athletic she is and like that's you can what tell when she's going the, just how NBA. athletic she is yeah big time yeah like she has the far more athletic body that could be could stand up to something like mm-hmm. the nba more and just although the moves still she could make yeah. are already you yeah. can tell just yes it's just different <laughs> yeah yeah it is it is different caitlin clark shooting is yeah insane okay though. if you wanted yeah. to have a comp- uh a thing of saying who would win a three-point contest like if that, that is, is an a, actual a conversation, different conversation now, all day yeah yeah yep. that is a different conversation if they want to bring her at i'd throw i'd like to see her compete against anyone in a yeah, actually contest, if the nba did know? that next year because they did that this year where they had some people oh they'd be insane not to try and get her yes to do that, that would be you know, a that's... huge thing like people are already talking about the three-point contest has already kind of turned into what the dunk yeah. contest used to be yeah, yeah. If they had caitlin clark you know, and some other guys in the three-point contest next year, people would go nuts for that. Yes. That's uh, that's where she could shine pretty well, though, mm-hmm. too. But that's where you don't have NBA defenders uh, <laughs> right. locking you yeah. down, you know, like <laughs> coming right <laughs> at you. <laughs> These guys that are all 6'5 to 6'7 with ridiculous wingspans. <laughs> with and seven-foot wingspans. <laughs> yes, yes, and crazy verticals, and they're extremely fast. verticals, and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's hard to understand how big those guys are, mm-hmm. though, too. I think, and t- like, uh, even the college basketball players, when you watch them from a distance, you're like, well, they're not that big. And you get down next to them, you're like, holy crap, yeah. you're all huge. Like, I haven't seen people this size in my regular life ever, and you're all right, right. here playing <laughs> right. this together. Yeah. Uh, any other hot takes on that before we... Um, I guess also of note, surprisingly, Mankato, men and women's oh, both won. Dang. D2 basketball, that's crazy. That is crazy that they won both. That's wild. Yeah, and then, yeah, I mean, I actually, what's tying a tie into that, though, is that UConn both has men and women left, and NC State both yeah. has men and women left, too, so. That's is, true, too. <laughs> it could happen in D1 it and could, D2. It is possible. It would be hard, but it is possible. So NC State's your men's pick? Oh, all day. I mean, I, I don't really don't care at this point, but uh, yeah. NC State, it's, uh, how could you root against them unless you're... Unless they took out your team, but even then, you should for, root for NC State. Right, like, and then you, do you have a women's pick? Um, uh, you have UConn, you know, Iowa, UConn's pretty good. Uh, South Carolina you, uh, just seems South like Carolina's, a team that really has it together. That big center's legit. Yeah, so. I'd have a hard time. <sighs> the only thing about Iowa is it just feels like if Caitlin Clark has an off night, like the team's in big trouble. Where it feels yeah. like UConn and and. Actually, UConn, have they talk about they're not very deep, but it seems like the teams, it's spread a little more even. And South Carolina, South Carolina really has like a total package. Yeah. Yeah. 
They're probably the favorite. I suppose, odds on favorite. I mean, you would think weird if they weren't. What have they won? Seventy of their last seventy-one games, something like yeah. that. Yeah, they're probably the hard to root against, hard, hard to pick against. Although I'll go Iowa just because uh, it probably won't happen. But I just want to. I think that's. If Iowa plays South Carolina in the championship, that's probably the most exciting one for me to watch. So is it, is it, uh, oh yeah, yeah. South Carolina and NC state are in the, okay. Right. I was trying to remember how that bracket was. Yeah. I'll be watching. Yep. Now that's what I call March madness (laughs) in April, (laughs) April madness. Here we go. Okay. Oh, anything else exceptionally important? I don't no, think so. I think it's time to go to bed. All right, let's wrap it up. Tommy, where do they find you at? You can find me at Tomahawk underscore D. You can follow me at Tanner underscore Bear. Just make sure, for the love of God, to follow Massonomics at Massonomics. See you. Yeah.